support he's getting and the impact his announcement is already having. And then it is day two of the Amazon Prime Day deals and we have deep discounts that you do not want to miss. And how would you like to spend less time cleaning and more time in the sun <sighs> relaxing? Yes. yes. Well, wait till you see what we have to show you. It is time for Today, Today in, in 30. 30. First, NBC's Megan Fitzgerald is in Napier, Illinois, where residents are picking up the pieces of a real devastating tornado there. Hey, Megan, good morning. Hoda, good morning to you. Yeah, the National Weather Service looked closely at some of the worst damage done by the storm. So this demolished house behind me here was a focal point of their assessment, where they're now saying that it was an intense tornado classified as an EF3 that ripped through this town. Overnight, more severe weather, this time throughout the east, from northern Tennessee to the Canadian border. New video showing Sunday's EF3 tornado with winds up to 140 miles per hour, tearing through neighborhoods west of Chicago. You can hear the winds just hitting the house and just like a freight train hitting the house. You know, the house was, the house was moving. Roofs ripped away, trees toppled onto houses and cars. This home leveled with two people inside. Our tactical rescue team went in and uh, moved the debris out of the way to get those people to safety. Officials say the cleanup effort will take weeks. Complete strangers helping one another sift through debris, salvaging what they can. So why would you come out here? Just to help out, you know, if, if this was my house, you know, I wish the community would come together and help me, so just doing my part. Uh, this is what happened. We had, Down the uh, street, Faye Ye had seconds to grab his daughter and wife and so escape were, to the basement. Were, it was, there was a moment of silence right before. It was kind of really creepy. And then suddenly, whoosh, right. Fear stretching from Illinois to Alabama. We got in the closet, you know, until it was over. My trailer was moving and rocking and everything. We got all my kids and we got in the tub. Where Tropical Storm Claudette wreaked havoc and turned deadly, killing at least 14 people, most of them in a multi-car pileup. The lights started going off and on. Destiny Ward says she and her kids are lucky to be alive. Picked my one-year-old daughter up and had her on my chest. And then my other two kids ran up to my legs. And the moment that happened, you can feel the trailer lift up and fly. A deadly and dangerous wave of weather as the storm season just gets underway. Out of the more than 200 structures that were damaged by this tornado, 19 homes here are now uninhabitable. City officials say the two people that were inside that home when it was leveled are still in the hospital, but Hoda were told that their condition is improving this morning. Mm, that's a little bit of good news there. All right, thank you, Megan. Now to a historic announcement in the NFL. Las Vegas Raiders defensive lineman Carl Nassib came out as gay on Monday. He is the first active NFL player to do so. His announcement met with overwhelming support for many in the league and beyond football. NBC Stephanie Goss joins us now with more on this story. Hey, Steph, good morning. Good morning, guys. I think this is having the impact he probably thought it would. Carl Nassib says he's a private person and that he agonized over this decision for years. But in the end, he took this step because representation is so important. The NFL saying in a statement they're proud of him for, quote, sharing his truth. I just want to take a quick moment to say that I'm gay. After more than 100 seasons, this fall could bring a new first for the NFL, with defensive end Carl Nassib becoming the league's first openly gay active player. I'm really not doing this for attention. Um, I just think that representation and visibility are so important. Nassib posting, I feel especially thankful to have had so much support when many who came before me and many even now do not. At six foot seven and 280 pounds, Nassib makes an impact on the field. That's an interception by Nassib. Now entering his sixth season, his second year with the Raiders, he caught people's eye off the field as well in HBO's Hard Knocks when he shared his financial knowledge with players in this colorful tutorial. Financial advisors are everywhere, okay? Don't take your money. In his post Monday, Nassib pledged $100,000 to the Trevor Project, a nonprofit that focuses on suicide prevention and crisis intervention for LGBTQ youth a group more than four times as likely as their peers to attempt suicide. CEO Amit Paley says announcements like Nassib's, especially in sports, can make a big difference. Representation matters. And when young people look up and see people who are like them, it sends a message that they can succeed. 
Just seven years ago, Michael Sam became the first openly gay player drafted to the NFL, but he never played a regular season game. The same year, the NBA's Jason Collins became the second openly gay athlete to play in a major professional sports league in the U.S. And two years ago, soccer superstar Megan Rapinoe became the first open lesbian to be part of Sports Illustrated's famed swimsuit issue. On Thursday, messages of support from Nasib's alma mater to rival teams and the league itself, which said the NFL is proud of you. This is the NFL is standing behind him. It's such a powerful message for, you know, other athletes who are contemplating coming out or, or thought that they'd wait until their playing careers are done. A sentiment expressed by Nasib during his own coming out. I actually hope that like one day videos like this and the whole coming out process are just not necessary. I love that sentiment. I, I, yeah. I hope one day this will not be right. not, not be a big deal, right? But the NFL has <laughs> been really busy. They're, they've been trying to engage the LGBTQ community in recent years. Yeah, they have. And they've done a number of things, kind yeah. of public steps, like sponsoring a float in the Pride Parade here in New York yeah. before COVID. They also have supported the group, uh, the Project You Can Play project, which promotes inclusivity mm -hmm. in kids and, and youth sports. But, you know, one of the things you, you hear NASA acknowledge there is that although these steps are important, more work needs to be done. Sure. Yeah, definitely. We're going to go call NASA, though. Yeah. Cool. Thank, Thank you, Steph. you, Stephanie. Stick around because there's much more coming up on Today in 30. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines, so crucial for reopening America. A big day around here, a very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. In a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. Yes, shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Let's Enough. get to what really matters. Roker, Roker gone come on. Oh, you How? know what? We had a lot of fun with a lot of help. Number five and oh so fine weather relay that got our NBC stations and affiliates involved from coast to coast. To pull this thing off, we tried to get the 10th Guinness World Record title. That's right. Rokerthon starts now. Here you go. We had a ball with Rokerthon 5. Here's your ball. Here's the beach ball, buddy. Hey, Al, thanks so much. <laughs> our Coast to Coast online weather reporting relay started our summer in the Sunshine State. Kicking things off in Tampa. Thanks, Al. All right, we started out as low as 79 this morning. Making our way clear across the country from a coastline corner of Maine to sandy beaches of Waikiki. And everything in between, including lakesides, deserts, and mountains. It was an epic, one-of-a-kind summer forecast streaming live on Today All Day. Getting a nice breeze. We've been sweating to the 90s and the triple digits. We have cloudy skies, a beautiful morning. Visiting nearly every state involving dozens of our affiliate family in an effort to set a new Guinness World Record. Got it! After three and a half hours. All right. Okay. Well, all right. Ah! Thank you. That's how fast you were. The space-time continuum. This is a brand new Guinness World Record wow! title. Rokerthon 2021 crossing the finish line. Wow. <laughs> Way to go. John, cool. our adjudicator from Guinness. Very it was cool. a lot of fun. And we did have, we had the beach ball thing. And of course, we were throwing and people had their beach ball. Yeah. But uh, because of the time delay sometimes, uh, I'd have the beach yeah. ball before they threw it or, or vice so, versa. So, so Al, does each person, each one of those weather meteorologists mm -hmm. get 
a Guinness World Record yes, title? They, they all, all do? They all get a certificate. Wow. So they are part That's of cool. Where do you put thing. all of your Guinness certificates, by the way? I keep them right next to my Guinness beer. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it's Emmys. But, I mean, right. does it, so you just, you were kind of the ringmaster the in between guy. each thing. Moving along, moving along. So we were right there along the Jersey Shore. Uh, and a shout-out to the nice people at McLoon's at Pier yeah. Village in uh, Long and, uh, Branch. I have shout an idea for Rokerthon 6. That was real six. cool. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know yet. No, yeah. but I have an idea. Oh, what? oh. Beat your own Rokerthon 1 record. Remember oh, when you one. broadcast for like 56 hours? Oh, 34 hours. hours. Oh, 34 oh, hours. That, was, that might have been she, our, my favorite. She's it was to my. Kill you. She's no, to kill. I'm not. Did Dylan put you up to that? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just thought it was amazing. But also, yeah, it was scary. I forgot that, too. Yeah, I Never mind. fainted. I, yeah. Do the okay. sandwich thing again. All right. <laughs> Nobody understood that yeah. one. Well, again, what, what the entire that? thing was live on our streaming channel, Today All Day, which, of course, can be found at today.com. And for updates on all our new programs, you can text all day to 34318. This morning, a heap of new sales as our Shop Today editors up early. They're at it once again. And ready to guide us through them. Shop Today's editorial director, Adriana Brock. Don't forget, you can scan that QR code on your screen for instant access to the deals. Hi, Adriana. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. The Shop Today team was back at it early this morning to find the best deals of Prime Days Day 2. Now, today is the last day to get your hands on all these incredible deals. And, of course, we did all the work for you, so you guys just have to scan the QR code. All right, good. What's our first item? I heard it was a fitness tracker of some sort. Mm. Yeah, so this last year, maybe we let our health goals go to the side. This Fitbit Inspire 2 is going to help get you back on track. It is 43% off, bringing the price to right under $60. This is one of the brand's best-selling trackers. It has 10 days of battery life, so there's no excuse to not stay on track. It's an activity tracker. It's got a heart rate monitor. It has sleep tracking, and it's water resistant, so it has everything you need mm -hmm. all, all right. in one. That sounds great. Okay, so uh, Savannah and I like music everywhere we go, and we want one of those cool little speakers you can just yeah. carry along with you what do you have yeah this one's really great it's the anchor sound core 2 and it's 20 percent off now this one's really great for summer because it's portable so you can take it from the beach to the backyard and it has 24 hours of battery life and it can withstand the elements so a little bit of rain sun sand and those bumps along the way are not going to do anything to it this is a really small and sturdy gadget and the sound is good on that one adriana yeah, it's got incredible sound for like right. the size of it is so small, mm -hmm. but you'd be amazed by the sound. It's okay. amazing. Well, that's cute. You could put it mm -hmm. in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about cooking. You've got a very popular pot. <laughs> yes, so, this so is, to speak. This is actually a, a rare deal alert from Le Creuset, yeah. which is one of the top of the line cast iron skillet grills, and it's 41% off. You can do it all. You can slow cook, you can sear. This is an amazing deal that doesn't really happen often. So now's the time to pick one up. It's a kitchen staple you're going to mm. use for years to come. Love that. Wow. All right. A lot of techies watching yeah. this and they want to know the hottest new tech gadgets. You've got a couple? Yeah. So we've got two. The first one is really cool. It's under $20. It's 43% off the My Chamberlain um, Smart Garage Door Opener. This is an awesome upgrade for any homeowner. You can take an old garage door and now control it from your phone. Oh, this what? is a bestseller with 48,000 reviews. Yeah. It's really cool. It's such a small price to pay for such a huge upgrade to your home. So we love that one. And then the other tech device we have is the Kindle Paperwhite, which is like I said yesterday, Amazon devices are on deep discount for today. And this one's one of our favorites because it's the thinnest and lightest e-reader that Amazon makes. And right now it's 38% off, great for all your summer reads, and the battery lasts for weeks. So you don't have to worry about it at all. That's all good. Right, that's real good. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk hair. Yeah. We don't want the frizzies. And you've got a great contraption that Hoda and I both highly approve I, I own three of them. It's amazing. <laughs> Well, hold on. You and the Today.com readers are on board with the Revlon Hot Tools. Now, mm. this one's a little bit different oh, than the round brush that they're known for. This one's actually really cool because it's going to get you smooth hair, which we all want, especially in the dead of summer when, you know, the humidity is making that frizz really pop up. This is a best-selling tool. It's great for all hair types. All you have to do is power it on and literally brush your hair to a great hair day. Oh, I want never tried that, that one. Yeah. We were talking about we're the talking oval about the thing yeah, the round one. But that looks nice yeah, too. Yeah, okay. This one, it's from the same brand, but it's just as amazing. It's thirty two percent off today. Want to grab that? All right. So, um, if you like your cocktail ice a certain way, 
you've got a gadget that'll do the trick. <laughs> Yes, we sure do. This is the GE um, Opal Nugget Ice Maker. You guys, Nugget Ice is going viral all over TikTok. And this is definitely a splurge item, but one that is taking the internet by storm. Online shoppers are obsessed with this thing. And today it's on rare discount for 18% off. It is insane. It has thousands of five-star reviews. People are obsessed. And what makes it so great is that Nugget Ice is made by actually compacting ice flakes, almost like a pastry. So it's basically like fancy ice, and it's said to make your beverages uh, actually taste a little bit better than regular ice. So mm. if you're an ice connoisseur and you love your summer beverages, this one's for you. Sounds like we need to research yes, this. Yes, we certainly hey, do. Adriana, thank Thanks, you so honey. much. I know you've got a lot more coming up in the third hour. And again, you can find the deals. You can scan the QR code, or you can go to today today.com and then do slash shop. And of course, a reminder that Amazon has an affiliate relationship with today. So when you buy a product through our site, Amazon pays a small commission on the sale. Hi to everyone watching Today in 30 on Today All Day. I'm Adriana Brock, Shop Today Editorial Director, and you just caught our Amazon Prime Day segment where we found all the best deals of Prime Day Day 2. And you can catch these and many, many more at today.com slash shop. Happy shopping. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. It does seem as if this White House doesn't want to bring a lot of high-profile attention to the issue. What efforts might depoliticize vaccine hesitancy? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Tonight, the CDC's new outdoor mask guidelines. What change that allowed this new recommendation to be made? If we do nothing, what happens to a city like Houston? You're going to repeat this movie over and over again. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Our Across America journey here in Louisville, Kentucky. Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. We're back with another special edition of Buddy Up, where the four of us hang out together for some, some fun away from work in the past. Chanel Jones and I have teamed up as the news nerds versus <laughs> Alan Dillon, a.k.a. the weather wimps. Uh, the Wait, the last time we did a Buddy Up, I was pregnant? You're pregnant all the time. Yeah. No, the Pictionary. Oh, then Pictionary. That. Right. Okay. Uh, They're last in person. Keep, keep moving. Okay. The Sorry. Wizards are first. The Wizards came out on top of yes. those ping pong and, and virtual Pictionary. So our first real life adventure after a year of Zooms, we went over to Chelsea Pier Fitness to right here in New York City to play some summer backyard games. We posted a poll asking who you think would win. Uh -oh. Let's find out if you were right. It was a gloomy afternoon in Manhattan for our first in-person buddy up in over a year. But we weren't about to let it rain on our parade. Now, this is the first time we've been together in person. It's to been buddy a while. Up. I'm so, so happy. We've got a little urgency because there's a big line of thunderstorms. Just saw that. We are the weather wizards. Oh my goodness. So let's get it going. <laughs> our first backyard game, a classic. Cornhole. Yeah, how do you score cornhole? So I think, if I remember correctly, I'm usually pretty drunk. <laughs> In the hole is three. Okay. On the board is two. Off the board, half off the board, like if it's dangling, it's one. Are you taking notes on this? Well, yeah, to, to score. Ooh! Oh! <laughs> wow. Right, doofus. Oh, name calling this early? Oh! oh. Who's that? Who's that? Look at me! Look at me! 
Hey, I'm Craig. I'm awesome. Boom, oh. baby, boom. Look at you. Yes. Look at you. Yes. Cornhole Pro. Cornhole Pro. Woo. Yes, yes. <laughs> Fifteen to nine. Yeah. News nice. All right. That's the game we won. Yes. So we had some wiggle room. Boom. In a shock to everyone, the news nerds are up one nothing, but the stakes are getting higher in a supersized version of Connect Four. All right, here we go. You gotta get four in a row. Okay. Faster. Four in a row. Faster. Four in a row. Ready? Yes. Ladies first. Okay. Smart move. Mm mm. Mm -mm. You don't want them to get anything, so don't put anything down because then they can. Mm -hmm. Good catch, good catch. Is this the least we've ever talked? <laughs> yeah. Ow! Yes! The old for? man's lost it! You did it! The old man's this. lost it! He just wanted the game to end! Okay, watch that. Next. Things aren't looking great for both Team Weather Wizards or literally the weather. What There's crazy. lightning and thunder What's coming. That? Is that becoming like a roll cloud? Look at that. With the storm approaching, it's time to get a move on for our grand finale, Can Jam. If it just hits the side, that's one point. You throw it, falls in, that's two points. Will Team Weather put any points on the scoreboard? Now, if it's above and you knock it in, right. you jam it, yeah. that's three points. If it what goes if it straight goes in, goal. game yeah. over. <laughs> good try. That was good. Oh, this storm's getting good. Now, vicious. watch it. will go four, three. Okay, yeah. fine. Just hit the thing. Oh. Oh, close. So four, like four. four. I know. That might have gone in. All right, Could've. four, four. First one to five. All right. Six. Mean, we oh, mean can jam. Despite the weather wizard's can jam comeback, they were still down two to one. We had a choice. Keep going or stay dry. As you can hear and as we've seen, oh, God. we've got yeah. a line of pretty severe thunderstorms rolling in. It would so seem to be that way. I think it's time to call this buddy up. Why? because I don't want to die. Uh, go news nerds, we won. Yeah. You won, yay! Congratulations to Lester Holt, the most trusted TV news anchor in America, on receiving the prestigious Edward R. Murrow Lifetime Achievement Award for a career dedicated to excellence in journalism. Right now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. That's good. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. I joined Ellen on her set. What's been a difficult year for her personally and for her show. Very few people go through such huge public humiliation. How can I be an example of strength and perseverance if I give up and run away? Our Across America journey here in Louisville, Orlando, Kentucky. Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow of a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Okay, it is time to kick off our easy, breezy summer series all week long. We're going to help you tackle your toughest tasks so you can relax, enjoy the summertime. And helping us out today is lifestyle expert and one of our favorites, Jill yes. Bauer. She's the creator of JustJill.com. She has all of those tips for cleaning that will get your home spotless in a cinch. All right, and if you like what you see on today, just scan that QR code on our screen. Jill, we just want to say, hey, hey how are Jill. you? Hey, Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Happy summer. And Our we, you can't take a vacation from cleaning, right, in the summertime, so hopefully we'll make it a little easier so you can get to those summer vacations sooner. Okay, Jill, I have to admit, I mm -hmm. love to clean, and I read your note like four times as if it was a romance novel. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I loved the most is how organized you are, and the first thing you say is that we have to get everything in order. So tell yeah. us what that order should look like. Yeah, so here's a couple of things that can make the cleaning day easier or allow you to clean during the week so the weekend isn't devoted to cleaning. Yes. First, attack your clutter. 
then you do your dusting, mm-hmm. then you do your vacuuming, and then you finish with mopping. And always work from top to bottom, whether that's if you have a multi-level home, start with the top floors and work your way down, or even in a room, clean the top of the bookcase first, and then work your way See, down from there. That's a little. Yeah, uh, why do we do that? Why do you say work from top to bottom? So why? Yeah. Well, if you if you clean down low, right, and then you get that yeah. all clean, and then you clean the top, and the dust falls oh, down on the top of the places that you just cleaned. Yeah. That's why you always work top to bottom. Mm-hmm. All right. So you say vacuums are important, and you say you should consider investing in a second vacuum. Okay, so this is like one of my favorite things ever, Me too. Guys. Me too. A cordless vacuum, because you don't want to lug out the big clunky vacuum when you're just doing your evening cleanup of crumbs after cooking. So a cordless vacuum is lightweight, it's easy to walk around with, and the more you kind of are encouraged to clean up quickly each day, the less you have to clean up on the weekend. Yeah, okay. and you know what? I have to say, I got, I got one for Christmas yeah. from my parents. I, I actually said it was my most favorite person during COVID. But there Wait, are... Wait, the vacuum was your favorite person? Well, I call... It has a name. What's its name? Um, none of your business. Um, but anyway, I would say What's this. its name? Lucy, okay? But here's the thing. They, there's different price levels, yeah. too. Like the yeah. one that you just showed can yeah. be kind of pricey, but there's yeah. different price levels as well. Yeah. Totally. And, you know, they've all come such a long way that they really, even for a small apartment, might yeah. be the only vacuum that you need. Exactly. All right. Let's talk about these guys that we have uh, with us. These, you, they look like slippers, but they actually do double duty. So what do you use these for? You put these on your shoes and you dance around I your mean, house so and you clean as you walk, right? Now, you don't literally have to dance, but they're designed to dust your floors. So That's you could cute. put them on as you're getting breakfast ready in the morning, or they're a fun way to get your kids involved with doing a little thing or two. I was going to say, I'm totally right. having yeah. my children do right. this. Okay, and nobody really, the bathroom is the last Yucky. place yeah. we like to clean, but you say just a one swipe wonder. What does that mean? Yeah, so if during the week you take 30 seconds with one wipe, and here's again the order of operation. Clean your sink, wipe down the countertop, yes. a quick wipe of the knobs, a quick wipe down of the toilet, throw away that wipe. If you do that one or two times during the week, then your weekend bathroom cleaning right. isn't going to be as involved. involved. Now, why are, yes. why is grandpa's denture cream an important element to have when you're cleaning? Okay, not the cream, oh, but good. the tablets, right? Still. Okay, so you drop a couple of these into your toilet. Why? Your toilet. Oh, because toilet. these are designed to remove and lift stains from porcelain. Ah. That's what your dentures are made out of. But what's your toilet made out of? Porcelain. Porcelain. So you have this effervescent that's going to help to lift some of the stains. Yes. Um, it's an easy thing to do. Again, it's not your deep dive clean. But it helps, again, make the deep dive clean easier because the stains aren't as much. Okay. Okay, I am going to g- steal my dad's denture. <laughs> <Dad> <laughs> he doesn't wear does dentures. He does? He doesn't wear dentures, but, but he could one day. Okay, while you're getting yourself clean in the shower, while you're washing, you yeah. say you can also maintain the clean- cleanliness of your shower. My dad yes, doesn't wear dentures. Yes, one of my must one of my must-haves is a squeegee. I love a squeegee. So if you squeegee down your glass shower doors yeah, and even your tile, it removes the moisture that leads to the mold and the mildew. So it's such a simple thing, but if you do it every time, you won't have that heavy-duty soap scum buildup yeah, or, again, that, that black You do that mistake. every day? No, we have it. I didn't say I use it, but it's really yeah, good. And it's very day. therapeutic to use. Okay, you say that a power tool can help you clean. How? So there's these cool attachments that you can get for the end of your drill. And so there's all different scrubbies, there's sponges, there's more kind of bristly. So use Uh, this to help clean out your toilet or use this to clean out your shower. There's different sizes of attachments for different needs. And I think this is like one of those ingenious inventions of why didn't I think about it? How many more things do you have left to show us? Just one or do you have a bunch? I have a couple. Wait, you know what? Quick. Then we're going to pause. Oh, let, can we do it? Why yeah. don't we do We have another little segment called Unscripted. Can we finish up in Unscripted? Yes, yeah, stay right we're there. We're going to finish in a little bit, okay? okay. So just hang there because we Sounds want good. these products for these and more. Scan the QR code on your screen. Head to today.com slash shop. Well, we got another big one tomorrow. Big, big show. John Cena is oh. here. So literally big. Big guy. <laughs> you know, Jeff, we're going to see you tomorrow right here. Have a good one, guys. Everybody, 
everybody, thanks for joining us here at Today All Day. I've, I've met some really great folks and, and had the chance to explore some amazing places. And I wanted to share some of these special moments with you again. I hope you enjoy these next interviews as much as I have. Our series, Reopening America. This week, it is all about Cleveland. Al is back at his own stomping grounds where they're always ready to rock, Al. Oh, that's for sure. This is where rock was invented, guys. And more than 25 years, this city has been home to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And now that famed hall is playing tribute to what's arguably music's biggest and exclusive gig, the Super Bowl halftime show. I got a behind the scenes look and got to channel my inner rock star. Here on the banks of Lake Erie, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is a place to celebrate music icons who've given us the soundtrack of our lives, while you could maybe get into the act yourself. We're here till Thursday. Try the veal. Now, amid the legends of rock music and their priceless artifacts, a brand new exhibit on the biggest gig of all, the history of the Super Bowl halftime show. What does it say for a, a performer's career that they're picked to do the Super Bowl halftime? When you think about the performers, so many of them are at the very top of their game. Bruce Springsteen, the Rolling Stones, Prince, Michael Jackson. What began by featuring college marching bands and groups like Up With People is now a full-scale cultural force. Here, you can see a spotlight on the gear, the clothes, to the detailed planning that goes into a performance that's viewed by an audience of more than 100 million people. For those 12 minutes, we're united in watching. That's the same thing that people are watching from New York City to Los Angeles to Miami to Seattle. And for that moment, we're all together. And that's the power of rock and roll. It's also the power of sport at its very best. The show's becoming timeless moments unto themselves. This jacket lined with the stars and stripes worn by Bono at the first post 9-11 Super Bowl with the names of those lost projected around the Superdome while you 2 played where the streets have no name. For my money, my favorite halftime show had to be Prince playing Purple Rain in the rain. And we forecasted it. They've got Katy Perry's beach ball inspired outfit from the 2015 Super Bowl, but more importantly, left Shark, whose commitment to the choreography is the stuff of internet legend. Go behind the scenes and see how Beyonce's Super Bowl 50 came together. How about this Versace outfit that Lady Gaga used to fly into Super Bowl 51's halftime show? And talk about planning ahead. She said she's always wanted to do this since she was four years old. And as if all that isn't enough, there's a piece of the set, an infinity room from this year's performance by the weekend. But I love you. But I love you. Where you can really lose yourself. <laughs> oh, I want to see more of that. I, I want to go. <laughs> all week long, we've been showcasing Cleveland for our series, Reopening America Today. Now, we all know about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but Cleveland's also home to some science rock stars who are busy planning America's future missions to the moon and beyond. When you think NASA, you probably think Houston. Houston, we have a problem. Or the Kennedy Space Center. But you should really be thinking about Cleveland, home of the John Glenn Research Center, named for the first American to orbit the Earth. Godspeed, John Glenn. Where the future of space exploration is taking shape now. We're the best kept secret uh, in many ways. It's here that an astronomical amount of research and development is being done for NASA's Artemis program, planning to return America to the moon, including the first woman and the first person of color to set foot there. That by itself is an inspiration to the new generation. They're working on just about every aspect of these missions, from propulsion and design to the rovers. NASA Glenn is led by Dr. Marla Perez Davis, a career NASA employee and the first 
Puerto Rican-born woman to lead a NASA center. I still remember this uh, vivid picture of me with my sister and my mom watching TV and see the, the lunar landing. That stuck to my mind. Even at 13, you knew you wanted to be a chemical engineer. What, what got you moving in that direction? So it really was two things. I love math and chemistry. I, I just took an encyclopedia and looked for what is the definition of an engineer, right? So I said, hmm, math, chemistry, chemical engineer. I want to be one of those. Aerospace engineer Aaron Rezich took me to the simulated lunar operations lab, or the slope lab, where conditions on the moon are recreated to test rovers. So this, this is more lunar sand? Yes. And this is Martian sand? Give it your best shot. Kind of stab that sand and tell me what it feels like. Well, it feels like I'm, you know, pushing into sand at the beach. Exactly. Give this one the same shot. Whoa. Yeah. Wow, it goes all the way in. Exactly. I mean, this almost feels like liquid. Exactly. It's very challenging to drive through. You don't get a good grip in it. Vehicles can get stuck. In a way, I got to set foot on Mars. One small step for man. <laughs> oh, wow, it's just, I'm like, just, it just The more you move, the, the kind of the worse it gets. You yeah. get a little bit of a quicksand effect. So if he goes too much further, we might lose Al in the sand. <laughs> That'd be a good day for Dylan Dryer. <laughs> One thing about planetary exploration, if you get a flat, you can't call a tow truck. Here, they've developed a technology called shape memory alloy that allows the rover's tires to repair themselves. Because it can envelop these rocks and it can take all sorts of abuse, you don't get the same damage that you would get in other situations. Wow. It's pretty stiff, yeah. right? What is this? So this is the same material we've got here in the spring mesh. Uh -huh. So give it a shot, bend it all the way down, and now hold on tight mm -hmm. and let it come back all by itself. Just like that, it's like it never happened. That's crazy. Two fingers there in the middle, bend it. Oh, it's getting warm. It's getting warm, right? And then when you snap it back... It's cold. It's cold. It's like that... How do it know? <laughs> because it does. You're rearranging the structure of the atoms, and it just kind of finds a new normal. They're also at work on life-sustaining robots. So this robot is called Apex, or the Advanced Planetary Excavation Robot. If this were on a planet, say the moon, what would this the job for this be? It's going to scoop regolith, or soil, but inside that, you have all different kinds of minerals. You have water ice, other gases that are in ice form, making rocket propellant out of water, processing liquid water from that ice so for our astronauts. You could take whatever's in there and use it for people to exist on, on the moon. Yeah. They have state-of-the-art facilities, including a chamber that replicates the harsh environment of deep space. Here, they test groundbreaking engines that convert solar energy into thrust. And one of the stops along the way will be the Lunar Gateway, an orbiting outpost providing support for missions to the moon and eventually Mars. The goal is to get to the moon and stay and be there to have a base by 2024. That, that's not that far away. That's correct. We're going to make that time frame? We, we are on our way. It was so cool to be there. I mean, this thing is about 300 acres. Yeah. The mm. Glenn Research Center, the place we visited, was actually the birthplace of the jet engine. Mm. And now they're working on electric airplane engines. Also on the grounds of, of NASA Glenn, they've got this 510-foot deep chamber. It's 20 feet wide, goes straight into the ground so that anything that's dropped can uh, achieve microgravity. Microgravity. Like micro, so it's almost weightless mm. for wow. five seconds. It, it's really... I had no idea that was in Cleveland. I think no. a lot of Clevelanders don't know it. It's just right It's right next to Cleveland Hopkins Airport. Huh. So what did it feel like to walk on the moon? That's what I want to know. Well, I, I, it's it, different from the moon, but Mars is really weird. Or Mars. You, yeah, you, 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 right it's, it's like quicksand. So, so is is the goal to put a base on the moon so that then it's easier to use shoot that, off from the moon? That's a way station get, to go to on to, to Mars. Right, and get your Mars. Yeah. It does seem as if this White House doesn't want to bring a lot of high-profile attention to the issue. What efforts might depoliticize vaccine hesitancy? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app.
right now on NBC News Now. They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there, uh, violence and persecution in their home countries. Killer Row, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're celebrating Mother's Day by sharing some of our favorite childhood recipes with all of you. I've shared a lot of my mom's recipes over the year, but this time I decided to kick up something special that was inspired by one of her classics. My favorite things my mom used to make me, she made a great grilled cheese sandwich, open-faced with tomatoes. And she also made this great pineapple upside-down cake. Her mac and cheese was to die for. Everything smelled great. When you opened the door from school and walked in the house and those, those aromas would, would just hit you, your mouth would start watering before you really got into the living room. The one thing that I really loved was her oxtail stew with dumplings. When I make this recipe for my family, I do it A, because I think it tastes great, but B, it keeps my mom's memory alive. It's really a, a cold weather recipe. And so I decided to turn the recipe into oxtail tacos. I've got my trusty cameraman, Nick. How are you doing, Nick? Good. Instead of uh, putting it into a braise, which takes, you know, four or five hours, I decided to do it in one of those uh, uh, Instapot. I'm taking oxtails, which uh, my mom used to love cooking because they, you know, we were a family of eight and uh, it was economical. So this is about uh, two pounds of oxtail. And I'm just, uh, put salt, pepper, little garlic and olive oil in there and sear them on both sides for about five minutes or so. Everything is now seared off. I'm going to take a couple of cups of beef broth, put that in. So this is gonna pressure cook for 50 minutes when it's done. Are you looking forward to this? Yes. Are you sure? I'm sure. You don't seem very sure. I'm happy, I'm sure. It's for Mother's Day. I know, I'm happy. You, are you sure? Yes. Okay, but you're still gonna get Mama present. Yes. Yeah, okay. Check back with us in 50 minutes. Well, bud, it's all done. Yes. So take this off. What I'm gonna do is now just start shredding these a bit. So the meat comes off. Well, here we have it. We've got oxtails, some tomatoes, some cheese, uh, some great flour tortillas that uh, Carson Daly had told me about. Uh, it's a Mother's Day feast. I just need a mom. Oh, uh, well, Deborah Roberts, would you would you like to try the oxtail tortilla? Uh, of course. Could I, I prep one here for you? That's great. Oh, would you like a little sour cream? Sure. And good. Uh, a little cheese? Uh, maybe just a tiny bit. Perfect. A couple of tomatoes? Sure. Excellent. Take a look. I'll take a taste. Mmm. Mom approved. Very good. Happy Mother's Day. Let me get my cameraman in here. <laughs> Thank Thank you. Thank you. Happy Mother's Mother Day, Day, everybody! That is so Could great. Could you guys be any cuter? Oh, I know, I'm about to cry. Why am I getting so emotional these well, days? And, and a shout out to Courtney Roger, <laughs> my, my oldest girl, who actually helped me with that recipe. Nice. Well, she is a chef. Yes, yeah, she yes. is. So, yeah. Yeah. Mother's Day came early for that Deborah. Was great. I've go. never tried oxtails before. They're really? so good. now on NBC News Now. They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there, uh, violence and persecution in their home countries. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? 
Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. right. Are you ready? Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. A huge lift is underway for one of the most celebrated cities in this country, Cleveland, Ohio. Yes. This is the greatest location in the nation. <laughs> We're having a baby. Wow. The big reveal is under the lid. <laughs> Yeah. Things are looking brighter, so we want to help you find the fun in 21. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. What's about to happen on our plaza is you're all going to get your very first COVID vaccine. I'm excited. She's excited. Three, two, one, two. So grateful. That close to crime. Here we go. It does seem as if this White House doesn't want to bring a lot of high-profile attention to the issue. What efforts might depoliticize vaccine hesitancy? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We are back with more of our Today Goes Green series. Uh, gardening is a springtime pastime. A lot of people enjoy it. Mr. Roker, you had a chance to... Uh, take part. I sure did. I mean, and one of the things you got to make sure you do is you got to get in there. You got to get dirty. But the good news is you don't need a lot of space, experience, or even a green thumb. I got to start my backyard garden with the help of one of the best, Chef Samin Nosrat, who shared her tips for making your plants thrive. Chef Samin Nosrat is known for traveling the world to study the elements of good cooking. This one is really salty. <laughs> but she finds her favorite ingredients right in her own backyard. For some, gardening and food are intertwined. A philosophy she shared with kids on Netflix, Waffles and Mochi. Do you want to see the other tomatoes I picked? There's just so much satisfaction in growing something yourself. This day and age, there are so few opportunities for us to do things where we get to do them from start to finish. If there were any silver linings to the pandemic, I think one of them was a lot of us, me included, got into gardening. I think we all got a little bit more motivated and educated about where our food comes from. For me, it's really calming. I spend a lot of my day on the computer and on the phone. I just come outside. It really gets me grounded. It feels good to get the dirt under my nails. What are some of the benefits that you love about gardening? It's just economical. If you have an herb garden, you can just go and pick a sprig or two. You're eating the most locally that you possibly can, literally like inches away from your plate. A lot of folks are intimidated. Can you get by without a green thumb? Oh, I mean, I had the blackest thumb when I first started. <laughs> One of the best pieces of advice that I ever received is that you are going to kill a lot of stuff along the way. The gardening is the learning. You learn, you know, which plants need more sun, which plants need less water. Stuff dies, it just happens. Give yourself a break. It's the circle of life. Totally. <laughs> With Samin's guidance, I'm ready to plant my own backyard garden. Begin by prepping the seeds the day before, pouring each packet into a cup and adding room temperature water. I always soak my seeds overnight and it's really increased the amount of like germination that I get. I love these little silicone trays. You can fill them with potting soil. You always wanna look on the back of the seed packet and that'll tell you how deeply to sow your seeds. A good rule of thumb is to go twice as deep as the size of the seed. I like to put two seeds per hole just so I have like a little insurance. I'm doing some beets. I have cucumbers. Plastic bins holding the seeds until they sprout. Most of us think, oh, let's water from the top, but you like to water from the bottom. You just put a whole bunch of water in your tray. The seedling trays are gonna absorb that from the bottom. And what that does is it won't disturb the seedlings. After a few weeks, our little seedlings have started to grow up. How do you know when it's time to be able to plant them? When it's about four inches tall or has at least four sort of vibrant, strong leaves, that's kind of a good rule of thumb. Rather than beginning from seeds, you can also buy starter plants at your local nursery. I've got some rosemary, I've got lettuce, I've got different kinds of tomatoes, some basil, and some thyme. How do you take it out? So the most sort of uh, precious part of the plant really is the roots. So you really want to be uh, as, as delicate as you possibly can. You could also use a butter knife to, along the sides. Sometimes you do need to loosen the roots. When it's planted, the top of your root ball is even with the top of the soil. 
being able to walk, you know, just a few steps and pick something out of the yard and put it directly into a plate of food that you're cooking. It feels super gratifying. It's so rewarding. And there is something very elemental about putting your hands into dirt and just, and, and then when you step back and realize in, in a month or two, you're going to be enjoying literally the fruits of your labor. And vegetables. Yeah, I, 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 exactly. I did. I planted some strawberries. So oh, you did. You've got some fruit as well. In fact, uh, this is the garden today. What? Uh, this was wow. last night. It's really everything's kind of really in about a week, uh, week and a half really. Things have really taken off. We had some rain. Everything works out good. Uh, and we want you to pay attention to your local climate, which plants can succeed. You can also check with your local cooperatives. A lot of your your counties can tell you what time you can plant what like we just had a big frost yeah. over the yeah. last couple of days so you want to be careful and you don't need a lot of space you can start those containers inside oh. you just put them into a sunny spot Samin's also got some bonus tips for us you can uh, find those on our today Instagram. We all just learned a lot. Yeah, that was fun. She's, cool. she's, she's Did amazing. you do all seeds or did you do by any did, starters? I did some seeds, but most of those I did with plants. I just yeah. want to get get things get started. Going. There's no, like she said, there's no shame in your game mm. if yeah. you start yeah. off. Yeah. 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 Have you put anything in a salad or a dish yet? Not yet. Okay, not yet. Not but I could. Yet. Some of the, the 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 lettuces grow very they fast. They do. So, okay. Uh, yeah, did you do oh. herbs too, like thyme and? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, what kind of herbs are you doing? Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking great. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. This is about 50 votes. If you can't get bipartisanship here, where are you going to get it? If China decided to cover this up, can we ever actually get a definitive answer? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Back inside now, and we are counting down to Earth Day with our series Today Goes Green. And this morning, we have a look at the auto fleet of the future. That's right. Experts are predicting that by 2030, more than 25 million electric vehicles will be sold each year. And the road to getting there starts now. I got an inside look at one automaker's bold goal to electrify the future. Pretty soon, this may become this. And here at GM's Orion plant, and our outside Detroit, something electric is beginning to take shape. I met GM President Mark Royce for a little car to car conversation. Well, Mark, the good news is we were able to find parking. <laughs> what is GM's goal when it comes to electric vehicles? To be carbon neutral by 2040, uh, to eliminate tailpipe emissions by 2035. And in order to do it, we really are introducing 30 EVs by 2025. They'll spend $27 billion introducing those 30 new models. And yes, GM will say goodbye to those greenhouse gas spewing combustion engines by 2035. Producing the Chevy Bolt and Bolt SUV here, the automaker has plans to introduce an all-electric Silverado pickup and the once gas-guzzling Hummer SUV, which will soon go 250 to 300 miles on a single charge. Global Manufacturing Vice President Gerald Johnson saying new battery technology is the tipping point, allowing for more affordable electric vehicles. When people are thinking about EVs as opposed to combustion engines, what adjustments do they realistically need to make? The quietness. Uh -huh. You know, you're used to hearing your engine start. Right. You don't. 
Yeah, uh, you're used to hearing your engine wind up and wind down, you know, as you drive. You don't. You pull in your garage and you plug up. Right. And the morning you get out in the car, you unplug, and you don't have to stop at gas stations. Analysts say fewer than 2% of U.S. cars sold last year were electric. America loves their cars. We know that. What is it going to take for them to love electric vehicles? Experience. Right now, there's only so many people that have experienced electric vehicles. Now that the technology has progressed to the point where we don't have things like range anxiety because we have 250 miles and 300 mile vehicles now, people will consider it more and more. For many, that anxiety is, where am I gonna fill up? Now, instead of pulling into a gas station, you'd pull into a charging station. But the question is, how convenient are they? Right now, estimated about 100,000 plus, they're gonna have to be a lot more for folks to feel comfortable driving an EV. Part of the president's infrastructure bill may alleviate the fear of a low battery warning with funding for a half million charging stations nationwide. GM's not alone. When people think electric vehicle, they think Tesla. How do you get people to now start thinking when they think electric vehicle, not only think them, but to think GM? The cars we're sitting in is, is a really good way to do that. And these cars are right around the price point of the average car on the road today. Competitor Ford selling the Ford Mustang Mach-E and plans to introduce a plug-in version of its popular F-150 pickup next year. So you may ask, what's the rush? Well, the largest source of global warming greenhouse gases, they're caused by the more than 250 million cars out there. Well, for GM, it's the future of not just the business, but the planet as well. You're at a point where you're producing something that will hopefully make a difference in the environment. How important is that? It's hugely important. Any of the things that we do to reduce that effect on, on Mother Earth, um, you know, it's extremely important. And it's not just the cars, it's the factories as well. Part of GN's plan to go carbon neutral is Factory Zero, a 4.5 million square foot traditional plant transformation. We took everything out. We tore it down to the studs. And it allowed us from a manufacturing standpoint to add new technology in how we process, add new technology on how we build these vehicles. Factory Zero is one more opportunity for us to get there faster. For GM, getting there faster now means charging full speed ahead. And in fact, just last week, GM announcing it would spend more than $2 billion to build a second battery factory in the U.S. GM is joining the major U.S. airlines and other large corporations pledging to go carbon zero in the next coming decades. Yeah. So, you know, yesterday, we talked with Michael Regan, yeah. the EPA uh, administrator, and the new one, and he said that they are in talks right now with all U.S. manufacturers, mm -hmm. auto manufacturers, mm -hmm. to make this push by 2030, 2035. And you, you have an electric vehicle. I have an electric, yeah. you know, and again... You know, there are the, the, the range anxieties, one of those right. things, you know, if you're driving around town, things like that. Yeah. But if you're making a long time, a long range trip, you know, you've got to worry about them. That's part of that infrastructure bill yeah. that's going to get out those half million chargers. That's going to be a yeah. game changer. I think initially it's the fear of trying something totally new, something yeah. that goes against everything you're used to when you go to a gas tank and fill up with gas. Yeah. I mean, I think as things change, you just get used to... I, I think what most people will, will, especially if you're a car, a car nut, uh, the idea that in a lot, across different manufacturers, yeah. you step on the pedal, boom, it is yeah. like you are <laughs> in a rocket sled. In, in the electric uh, car? In the electric now car. Now you're speaking my language. Yeah. 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 Now they need to make a sound that goes with it, just like an artificial... <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Maybe we should all go driving again. No. Oh, there you no. go. No, sign no. me up. I'm ready no. for another adventure. Day. We've got a great show for you on this Tuesday morning, including an all-day exclusive chat you can only see here. Plus, we celebrate another successful Rokerthon. Al pulled off his 10th Guinness World Record title, but let's kick it off with Pop Start. Ted Lasso is back. The Apple TV Plus series released the season two trailer overnight, and Chanel has all the details on the Richmond Greyhounds. Take a look. 
Let me tell you barbecue. something. Al makes the best sandwiches. I know. I mean, I know. your house. Just... Come on, on, come on over. He does it every Tuesday. We're doing it at one o'clock. The best every Tuesday. Okay, <laughs> stop trying to make Tuesday a thing. It's, it's not happening. It's already a thing. Speaking of Tuesday, right. yes. So no, would you no. like pop start yes, on this Tuesday? Yes. Yes. All right. First up, Ted Lasso. The Richmond Greyhounds are back after an award-sweeping first season. The Apple TV Plus series about an American football coach taking on an underdog British soccer team just released a trailer for season two. Jason Sudeikis returns as the perpetually optimistic coach Ted Lasso and after a crushing season finale it looks like he's determined to find a silver lining. Here's a peek. You're heavily favored this weekend. You think this will end your embarrassing streak of draws? Lloyd I've never been embarrassed about having streaks in my draws. You know it's all part of growing up. I got a question for you. Has a team a lot of us ever won the whole chimichanga? Not for 40 years. Oh! Coming through here, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, I got you. It's like Dukes of Hazards. <laughs> Y'all probably call it the no. Earls of Risk over here. I, you little turd birds, start touching your toes. They touch each other's toes. What? what? How long was I? Not as long as last time, but nobody was hurt. Okay. I love it. And that's not all. Yesterday, Ted Lasso received the prestigious Peabody Award. Wow. The honor was introduced by none other than on screen's kicking and screaming soccer coach, Will Ferrell. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Just wanted to uh, take time out here while I was strolling through the palatial grounds of my backyard to give a heartfelt congratulations to. Jason Sudeikis, Bill Lawrence, on Ted Lasso, and you created a very special show that was not only funny, but poignant, and came at a time when we really needed to laugh. Hey, get out of my backyard! Okay. There you go. <laughs> Congrats to everyone at the show. Seriously, I've never met anyone yeah. who, once they watch it, they yeah. don't like it. Yeah. They love it, right? right. Yes. Season two of Ted Wait. Lasso starts streaming July 23rd on Apple TV+. You got the Peabody because of the the threat of optimism that yeah. the show, yeah. I guess, okay, created. I wonder. That's what he yeah. talks about. Why? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah it's true. People felt it. All right, next up, Peyton Manning, the soon-to-be professional football Hall of Famer, recently stopped by the Kelly Clarkson show. And during their conversation, Peyton Manning revealed that thanks to one SNL sketch, he has a hard time convincing his kids' friends' parents to let him coach their sports teams. <laughs> well, I gotta tell you, Kelly, some of the parents, I think, of the other kids on the team were a little hesitant at first because the last time they really saw me ever doing any coaching was on this Saturday Night Live skit where I was pegging <laughs> seven-year-old kids in the head with footballs, <laughs> and I think these parents were like, are we sure we want our kid to play on your team? I'm like, I could find plenty of kids who would love to have him as a coach. In case you don't remember that hilarious <laughs> SNL sketch he's talking about, here's a clip. Proud 55 Razor! Sit! Open. Get open. <laughs> Get your head out of your <laughs> Suck. Let's go. Let's go. Get back. Do you want to lose? I throw, you catch. It's not that hard, okay? All right, get the <laughs> out of here. <laughs> So good. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, and finally, Hugh Jackman. More than two years after it was announced that the X Men star would be stepping into the swindling shoes of salesman Harold Hill and Broadway's The Music Man, it's all finally happening. The show was originally set to open in October of last year, but was postponed due to the pandemic. Starring alongside Jackman as Marion Peru will be Tony winning actress Sutton Foster. And it looks like Hugh's already hard at work. Look at this. This morning, he posted this video at rehearsal. Look at this footwork. He's so talented. He's so darn talented. Tickets for The Music Man on Broadway go on sale today. Wow. Previews start December 20th at the Winter Garden Theater. That is going to be a good show. Broadway's going right? to be back in a big way. Can't this. wait. His one-man show was one of the best shows I ever I ever saw. Oh, yeah, him on Broadway. He was wow. amazing. I can't wait till he comes back. So All right. Awesome. That's good. cool. There you go. Good one. Thank you, Thanks, Chanel. Chanel. Up next on Today Talks, it's Craig and Chanel versus Dylan and Al in a backyard games competition. Stay with us.
Congratulations to Lester Holt, the most trusted TV news anchor in America, on receiving the prestigious Edward R. Murrow Lifetime Achievement Award for a career dedicated to excellence in journalism. Ready actors. An indie horror film, a talented young actress, and a deadly shot. Dateline's newest podcast, Killer Role. Action! Subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts. This is about 50 votes. If you can't get bipartisanship here, where are you going to get it? If China decided to cover this up, can we ever actually get a definitive answer? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. I joined Ellen on her set. What's been a difficult year for her personally and for her show. Very few people go through such huge public humiliation. How can I be an example of strength and perseverance if I give up and run away? Welcome back. After a year of Zooms, the Third Hour Gang goes on a real-life adventure to Chelsea Pierce Fitness for a competitive day of backyard games. Take a look. <laughs> we are back. Eight with 59 <laughs> and 60. Yeah. We're back with another special edition of Buddy Up, where the four of us hang out together for some, some fun away from work in the past. Chanel Jones and I have teamed up as the News Nerds versus <laughs> Alan Dillon, a.k.a. the Weather Wimps. Uh, the... Wait, the last time we did a Buddy Up, I was pregnant? You're pregnant all the time. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. No, the Pictionary. Oh, then Pictionary. That, yeah. Right. Okay. They're uh, less in person. Keep, keep moving. Okay. The Sorry. Wizards are first. The Wizards came out on top yes. of those ping pong and, and virtual Pictionary. So our first real life adventure after a year of Zooms, we went over to Chelsea Pier Fitness to right here in New York City to play some summer backyard games. We posted a poll asking who you think would win. Uh oh. Let's find out if you were right. It was a gloomy afternoon in Manhattan for our first in-person buddy-up in over a year. But we weren't about to let it rain on our parade. Now, this is the first time we've been together in person. It's to been buddy a while. Up. I'm so, so happy. We've got a little urgency because there's a big line of thunderstorms. Just saw that. We are the weather wizards. Oh, my goodness. So let's get it going. <laughs> our first backyard game, a classic, cornhole. Yeah, how do you score a cornhole? So I think, if I remember correctly, I'm usually pretty drunk. In the hole is three. Okay. On the board is two. Off the board, half off the board, like if it's dangling, it's one. Are you taking notes on this? Well, yeah, to, to score. Ooh! Oh! Wow. Right, Doofus. Oh, name calling this early? Oh! oh. Look at that! Look at that! Look at me! Look at me! I'm Craig. I'm awesome. In a shock to everyone, the news nerds are up one nothing, but the stakes are getting higher in a supersized version of Connect Four. All right, here we go. You gotta get four in a row. Okay. Four in a row. Faster. Four in a row. Ready? Yes. Ladies first. Okay. Smart move. Mm -mm. You don't want them to get anything, so don't put anything down because then they can. Mm -hmm. Good catch. Good catch. Is this the least we've ever talked? <laughs> yeah. Ow! Yes! The old for? man's lost it! You did it The old man's it. lost it! He just wanted the game to end! Okay, watch out. Next. Things aren't looking great for both Team Weather Wizards or literally the weather. There's lightning and thunder what's coming. What's coming. Is that becoming like a roll cloud? Look at that. With the storm approaching, it's time to get a move on for our grand finale, Can Jam. It just hits the side, that's one point. You throw it, falls in, that's two points. Will Team Weather put any points on the scoreboard? Now, if it's above and you knock it in, right. you jam it, yeah. that's three points. If it what goes if it straight goes in, ball. game over. <laughs> Good try. That was good. Oh, this storm's getting Now, vicious. watch it. We'll go 4-3. Okay, fine. Just hit the thing. Oh, oh close. So 4-4. Four, four. Four. That might have gone in. All right, 4-4. Four, four. First one to 5. All right. 6. Mean, mean, oh. mean can jam. Despite the weather wizard's can jam comeback, they were still down 2-1. to one. We had a choice. Keep going or stay dry. As you can hear, and as we've seen, oh God. Ta -da, we've got yeah. a line of pretty severe thunderstorms rolling in. It would so seem to be that way. I think it's time to call this buddy up. Why? 
because I don't want to die. Uh, good news, nerds. We won. Yay. You won. Yay. Ooh. Makes them feel better. <laughs> oh, we heard you. She, she booed us. Yeah, she did. Just boo she us? did. You know, listen, I, and I love teaming up with Ellen, but I will say you are the most competitive human being. She is so I will, competitive. I, 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 I got a little annoyed at you because you handed over the game of Yes, Sports because you know what? You I have so few years win. left on this planet. <laughs> I was so, so I did not want to spend them electrocuted. I thought you were a little competitive. <laughs> I was so worried about the weather. We were like, oh, whatever. So, so, so can you imagine the headline? Like if Al Roker got struck by lightning? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> can you imagine that? Yeah, so who yeah, wants to see that story? <laughs> Let's see what people, we got a poll. You guys went to our our, our Twitter and uh, told who thought who you thought would win. And so in far. fact, they oh, thought the wizard, that, weather right? wizards would win. Because we normally do. Well, I'm still not upset. this time. You, you phoned it in. Not <laughs> this time. You know what? But I'm still here. <laughs> okay, and then we got them right where we wanted to. They're fighting. Dang. They're fighting. fighting. No, all okay. right, there's another one good. coming soon. Uh, uh, thanks again, by the way. First of all, to photo Nate for those fantastic yes. pictures. Also, big thanks to Chelsea Pierce Fitness for hosting our games and hosting our victory party as well. <laughs> <laughs> we also... Just so you know, I have a game changer in our presence because Mr. Al Roker changing the weather game once again, adding another Guinness World Record title to prove it. You set the record yesterday, a world record during a coast-to-coast -coast summer weather relay. It was fun. We, we had over 60 NBC stations, a couple of colleges, yeah. okay. all doing weather. We were tossing a, a virtual beach ball to them and, instead of the baton, and so right. we went back and forth and back and forth. It was it was a lot of fun. That was the adjudicator there, uh, uh, Brittany Dunn from uh, Guinness, and we, we had a very specific job adjudicating. Well, yes, <laughs> the adjudicator. Well, I thought it was interesting that you said earlier job? this morning. It is. She, Everybody who participated. She crosses the country. She's an yes. educator. That is, she should do a profile on her. Yeah. Saying it. Yeah. It's great word. Yeah. It's word to well, say. You know, in, in, uh, in John Wick 3, the person who, <laughs> oh who determined whether you stayed at the Continental or not was the adjudicator. The adjudicator. So, called a John Wick I, I, I reference. John Asia Wick 3. Asia Dillon was, uh, was the adjudicator. Really? Oh, by the way, shout, shout out to him. Shout out to the technical team as yes. well. Yes. That's, That's right. no small feat. That's right. And all of our producers. We've got our producers and we've got everybody. We had every Everybody at their whole team, mm. both uh, at Long Branch, uh, New Jersey, right. and here at 30 Rock, uh, making sure this all happens. We have the so thank you right out in front. Yes. 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 You just and like to all of the, I know, yes. all the meteorologists around the country, do That's they right. also get a plaque? They also get a certificate. They really? are part of the Guinness cool. World Record. What about the adjudicator? Does the the adjudicator, adjudicator does not get one because she hands it out. Oh, why, why wasn't I asked? <laughs> <laughs> it always really, comes back to really really Wow. Oh, wow. And the thing is, the thing is, She's so serious. far away. Uh, <laughs> Stephanie, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Sorry, you got off line. Glad you're leaving now. Uh, <laughs> Enjoy your hour. Just in time. Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, it's Tuesday, Tuesday. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. It does seem as if this White House doesn't want to bring a lot of high-profile attention to the issue. What efforts might depoliticize vaccine hesitancy? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. It does seem as if this White House doesn't want to bring a lot of high-profile attention to the issue. What efforts might depoliticize vaccine hesitancy? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Hi, everybody.
everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Okay, and so today is a Tuesday Tuesday. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? I'm looking at, okay, I just think, okay, first let's show our dresses and then we'll have, we have to discuss something okay. on Twitter. Okay. It's very important that yeah, we know we the answer to this. want your opinion, okay, but today's but first, Tuesday, Tuesday, yeah. so these are summer looks, yeah. okay? Here are Hoda's looks. Okay. Did you pick these? I didn't, I, th I think those were chosen for me and then I, um, I think I, I don't know. Okay, okay but I, I like really, those. I know What's which one yours? I choose. You do? Okay, yes, I choose, but should I say? No. And these are mine. Oh, those are cute. People are not going to like the first one, but it's yeah. actually cute in real life. Is somebody whistling? Who is it? Right here. Wow. Okay. Okay. Of course it is. All right, so let's go to Hoda and Jen, our Instagram page, and you can pick the outfit that you like the best. We'll see if your pick wins. Okay, so we have a question, very important, before we move along. So uh, this is what happened, okay? I had I was wearing something and we had to change. So I quickly, went, yeah, because we have quickly we do some, we do some things in yeah. the morning. So mm -hmm. I ran into the bathroom to change, and I was mm -hmm. wearing those spanks that have the hole. The hole is there for convenience, and the hole is there so that when you have just a few minutes to use the restroom, you can use the restroom. <laughs> Why don't we just pull down the spank? Because the spank has a hole. <laughs> oh, I know. Well, but so does when you have those old fashioned diapers that have, the, I mean, uh, pajamas, diapers. pajamas that have the flap. You know, they sell those you for pull, grown ups. You pull the flap down. <laughs> so I, so I utilize the hole and unfortunately. First of all, you don't, I, I'm just shocked that you don't have undies underneath your spanks. This is the debate. Hoda thinks. Yeah, I think you spanks, should have undies. Underwear go below the spank. I say that the spank replaces the underwear. Well, I would say I would agree with you if you had five pairs of spanks in your closet each week, just like you have five pairs of underwear, because otherwise it's like taking something and folding it back up and putting it back where you put your spanks. It's an undergarment. It is an undergarment no. that replaces the underwear. <laughs> And I think, I actually, I'd like to get Sarah Blakely on the phone because I think she would agree well, with me that Spanx, the question is... But that is, means you have to wash them daily, like you would underwear, I, like you do you, with your underwear. It, do you wash your Spanx daily? It's my only question. <laughs> By daily, my if you mean every day? Daily, yes, I do. Not exactly. <laughs> if, if you say daily, meaning once or twice <laughs> oh, in a while? In a while. Yes. But okay. Sarah Blakely would say, so the question Sarah is... Sarah Blakely would probably say get five pairs of Spanx and wear one each day as underwear. Okay, maybe we will. <laughs> I have a few pairs, but the problem is oh, well, what happened it, with the hole. Okay, I think Hoda's right we... about the hole. <laughs> Pull this bank down. Okay, but wait, that don't go. wait I have up. a question. You've got to change your dress. Okay, okay. What's your question? No, I, actually, I think we've gone too gross. I think we need to pull out. Okay. I think we need to okay. get out of this conversation. I always do what you it's say. Already... We've got to go. We gotta... Okay, it's time okay. to send a huge congratulations to our own Al Roker. <laughs> <laughs> Al Roker completed Rokerthon 5 yesterday. Day. So this is a guy who has broken so many records. And what I love about Al is he actually did a weather cast where he handed off to each of the affiliates all around the country. Al does this. Al sets a record and shines a spotlight on a bunch of other people. He does it almost every single time. It's the most people in a weather reporting relay. So we just want to say. Isn't it true that all of them, all of those that did the weather also broke the world record? They get a certificate from Guinness, uh, too. So Al gets one, and they're going to send one to all of the people around the country. And uh, plus, it's kind of fun when you're in a local, when you're a local affiliate. Yes. I remember when anyone from the network did anything at our place. It was like such a huge deal. It's like, oh my gosh, like Dan Rather is here. Oh my gosh, Tom Brokaw's mm. here, or whatever. It felt so good, and I'm sure they felt the same way about Roker being in their neck of the woods. So oh, I just loved hats it. Off to Al. Okay, so there's a guy that we love almost as much as Al. Not exactly mm -hmm. the same, but close. And his name is Ted Lasso. He's You've one of been, our by the way, you were really kind of on the front line of this baby. I love Ted yeah, Lasso. Yeah. Okay, if you haven't seen it, uh -huh. you really should. And it's a comedy about an American coach leading a British soccer team, and it stars Jason Sudeikis. Yeah, there's a trailer that's out, a new one for season two. And Ted Lasso <laughs> has an alter ego, and the alter ego's name is Led, Led Tasso. Tasso. And that guy's nasty. Take a look. <sighs> 
Do you think this will end your embarrassing streak of draws? Lloyd, I've never been embarrassed about having streaks in my draws. You know, it's all part of growing up. I got a question for you. Has a team a like us ever won the whole chimichanga? Not for 40 years. Oh! No, you don't come through here, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I got you. It's like Dukes of Hazards. <laughs> Y'all probably call it the no. Earls of Risk over here. I think it's time for these young fellas to meet that guy. Oh, no. Ladesso. I, you little turd birds, start touching your toes. And touch each other's toes. <laughs> what? <laughs> How long was I out? Not as long as last time. Nobody was hurt. OK. <laughs> Led Tasso. Oh if you watch the show, you know that Ted Lasso is like the most affable, funny guy in the world. But he has this alter ego. Do you have an alter ego? My sister used to say whenever I would turn like dark. Yeah. She would say that it was my evil twin, Helen. Helen. Yeah. They I, called I, her I, Helen. I don't think I met Helen. You yet. haven't. But once every now and then. Am I going to well, meet her? <laughs> everybody. Every now and then. It's like, it's like, you know, some people are like Mount Etna. It only happens every now and yeah. then. But when it happens. Oh, so who's yours? Well, I don't have a name for mine. <laughs> um, but, I, but my husband would say, she's scary. <laughs> she's scary. <laughs> I mean, you're right. Every once in a while, yeah. you just you get crazy. The anger boils yes. up in the rage, yes. and you just can't help it. You, you know, can't. you just need that release. I think people do have alter egos. I mean, I think some people who are really soft-spoken yeah. have like a more bold, brave. Like Beyonce in an interview is very kind of you lean yes. in because she, you know, you want to hear her. But when she's on stage, she's Sasha, Sasha fierce. fierce. Yeah, yeah. I know, I want to create some sort of awesome alter ego. Yeah. I think we all should. And experts say it's actually really good. It can reduce anxiety. So you just pull out and your... boost confidence. People you know must people do that. People do that yeah. kind of stuff, like, in their love lives. I mean, I They don't. become... What? Wait, what? Like, you know how people kind of do they that? They have, like, play. an... Yeah, they're, like, all of a sudden an... A nurse or something. <laughs> well, that's different. <laughs> that's a whole different. The naughty nurse is not what this is about. This is or about like, at all. I've never done that, but I think it'd be really fun to be like, yeah, I'm <laughs> from Indiana. I don't know why. You never did anything like that? I, I mean, not, <laughs> not really. Not that I can remember. <laughs> OK. Anyway, <laughs> there are a lot of people who have somebody who's like kind of seems bolder. Wait, Carrie Underwood has one, too? Well, I don't know if she does, but Carrie Underwood's <laughs> got that thing where when you interview her, she's, yeah. she's kind of soft-spoken yes. and you lean in. When she's on stage, she like, rawr. I think there's something cool Ooh. about that. Same with Serena. Like, when you interview her, yeah. she's very measured. When she's on the court, yes. she is fierce, you know? Oh, well, I actually was playing in a little tennis tournament, and I'm not that good at tennis, yeah. but I'm really competitive, and yeah. I was kind of getting flustered, and I looked at my partner, and I said, I'm just going to pretend I'm a heavy set man right now. <laughs> She was like, oh, what? Because I kept saying sorry. Like, oh, I'd yeah. hit a good shot, yeah. and I'd say sorry. sorry. I hit a bad shot, I'd say sorry. sorry. I was right. like, I'm done That's with this. Done. I'm a man. And then how'd it go? And then I'd, like, hit a bad shot. I'm like, okay, I'm not heavy set anymore. I'm thin. <laughs> You're so Beat. weird. <laughs> man, I mean, I know. I'm weird. Weird. <laughs> Season two of Ted Lasso premieres July 23rd okay. on Apple TV+. Plus. Can you guys just go to our Twitter and tell us if underwear is an, I mean, if Spanx replaces underwear? That's the question. <laughs> Thank you. Today Talks continues after the break. My exclusive chat with Hoda you can only see here on Today All Day. It does seem as if this White House doesn't want to bring a lot of high profile attention to the issue. What efforts might depoliticize vaccine hesitancy? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. What's about to happen on our plaza is you're all going to get your very first COVID vaccine. I'm excited. She's excited. Three, two, one, champion. So grateful. That close to crime. Here we go. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! 
right now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska. Tonight, the CDC's new outdoor mask guidelines. What change that allowed this new recommendation to be made? If we do nothing, what happens to a city like Houston? You're going to repeat this movie over and over again. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Welcome back, guys. Uh, this is Today Talks. I'm still stunned at our Twitter poll. I don't know if you all saw it on Today All Day, but it was a big one. Yeah, well, we had a conversation this morning around Spanx. What else? No, but this is big. This is very important because most people wear them with dresses to smooth everything out. And I, I believe strongly that you should wear underwear with those Spanx because that's the way it is. But the Twitter poll well, disagreed And I with have me. to say, when, when Hoda said that to me this morning, I couldn't believe it because I've never once thought of wearing two undergarments. It seems to me that a spank takes the place of the underwear. Well, apparently the Twitter poll agrees with you, but Savannah agrees with me because well, she Savannah wrote. Savannah has to agree well, with no, you, okay? She doesn't. She wrote undies under Spanx 100%. Why? Because you don't have a gallon jug of you, Tide in your room to be washing all your space. Will spanks. you do me a quick favor and just text her back and say, how often are you wearing space? No, I'll do better than because that. Because I'm I'll afraid. I'll do better than that. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay. Because this is what I'm afraid of. Savannah, Savannah is commenting on something she don't know about. She I don't knows. think she wears a spank. Well, let's just <laughs> see. Okay, and uh, we're going to FaceTime her. Okay, oh, we'll be good. Any, hopefully, you're not showing any phone numbers. Oh. Hey, you're on our Today All Day about the Spanx controversy. <laughs> what controversy? Thank you. No, wait, Savannah. There, wait, wait. Let, let, underwear under your Spanx. Well, our Twitter poll disagreed with you and me. They uh, claim, yeah. No, the Twitter poll claimed. They agreed with who? They agreed with the one who's got her, her tushy out. The one who's been wearing the same Spanx with no underwear? Um, five days straight without washing Five days straight. How many days Savannah, do you go without listen, washing them? So I go a few days without washing them, but Savannah. See, that's like going without washing your underwear. Okay. That's a problem. Savannah, may I just ask you a question or two? I know you're not usually on the stand, but I'd like to put you there. Here's my question to you, oh, lawyer. Counselor. Counselor. I don't your okay, go, well, you go for it, babe. It. Go. Here we go. Here's the question. What? Savannah, how often do you wear a spank? Oh, interesting. I wore one today. And do you know what? I brought it home with me. And why, you might ask? Because I need to wash it. Yeah. And, with it. and she wore underwear with it, too. You, You're going well, to double let's, protect let, wait, yourself? Wait, wait. Let's just show. We're going to take this one step further. Jenna also <laughs> doesn't wear underwear with jeans. Hoda! Well, it's the truth, and we're here telling the truth. I think yeah. Savannah knows that. <laughs> okay, this is <laughs> gross. This into my laundry room to show you the dirty spank. Look, look, this is her laundry room. Let's see it. Literally brought my spanks home. Shoot, where did I put them? Anyway, well, there's my underwear. But oh. I do. I was just showing you my laundry room to show that I brought home. Okay, things. okay. You I, you didn't ask my, you answer my question. What? I understand that you wore a pair today. <laughs> She's trying How to nail you down. How often do you wear a spank? Be honest. How often? Lately, a lot. <laughs> Okay. okay. I think See, we're just going to have to agree well, to disagree. Well, case closed. Well, I think your two I'm friends. Glad that you have no, two your two people, friends. Your two friends yes. would like to convince you otherwise. Four percent of America has convinced <laughs> me that I'm right on. I'm, 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 next segment is sponsored by Woolite. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. All right, all done. Hey, thanks Thank for talking. Bye-bye. Today all day yeah. rocks. Bye-bye bye -bye. now. Can we just go ahead and say that Savannah is such a perfectionist that if the whole purpose of wearing undies under the Spanx is to not wash them, and then yet she goes to wash them. That Waste actually, of time. That's, a, that is, that's going the extra mile. So you're on my team. No, I'm not. But I definitely, when I wear jeans, I always wear underwear. And that's once my in a while, role. I don't, okay? It's not a big that's deal. That's been a great episode of Today All Day. Isn't it fun? Aren't you glad? you tuned in. Well, there's more tomorrow. Maybe it'll be as good as today, but it's doubtful. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, it's so great to see you. By the way, first of all, I love this friendship. I'm, I love it.
I love it. And Billy, is it is? Do I have the story right? You're watching SNL like you do on Saturday nights, and on pops this amazing human being who like captivates you. I was blown away. I mean, I I had not seen Girl Trip, so. When she came on, I went, who is this? And she was so great and funny and charming. And and she wore this beautiful white dress. And and she just was, and in the sketches, she was sensational. So I, I you know, know we had draft. finished a draft and I and I called Alan and I said, watch it. That's who, we have to get her. We have to get her. And fortunately we did. So Tiffany, how did you learn that Billy Crystal had his eye on you and said, that's the girl I want for this role? My, um, well, first the universe told me Billy is coming. And I was like, Billy who? No, uh, I had a dream. No, no, my agent called me and was like, uh, Billy Crystal would like to talk to you. He would like to meet with you. And I was like, Billy Crystal wants to talk to me? Are you serious? And it's like, yes. And so I remember, I was like, set it up. So I remember the day before I was like, uh, my hair, I had just took my hair out of some braids and I was like, oh, should I go natural? Should I, what should I do? Should I, should I press my hair? Should I, what should I do with my hair? Like, do I need to put on makeup? I was like, you know what? I'm going to show up supernatural. I'm going to come all the way through. And if he, if he, if he like me, it'd be cool. If he, if he just trying to use me for something, <laughs> then he probably be like, I'm good. I came through with an Afro, no makeup on. And was like, and I think I was late. You would know you were jet, you were jet lagged because you had just you had just flown in from Africa. But if I'm yeah. right, yeah, right? yeah. Really first and impression we, of Tiffany when she walked in. Uh, that's the girl. That's that's who she is. That's um, and then when we talked about the script and she told me what was going on in her personal life, um, and she and I was going on and on. And she goes, "You don't have to talk anymore." I'm, basically, you had me at hello. Yeah. You know, let, let's let's just do this. And so, um, you know, the qualities that we, that was amazing that, that we, we hope to get in the character um, were just naturally uh, Tiffany and that became naturally Emma. Well, Billy, when you, um, the last time you directed, I think was your, uh, was 61. I think that was right. the last time. So right. I was thinking if you were gonna- Not in 1961, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not right. that old, no. The movie was called 61, yeah. asterisk, which actually is having, uh, it's going to be on, uh, well, can I say HBO? I guess I did. Yeah. It's our 20th anniversary of that movie. So that was the last time I directed. So for yeah. you to pick a project or come up with a project um, or you, you would have to fall in love with it. And this is something that you've been working on for three years now. So tell us about the genesis. How did it start? Well, my my dearest friend, um, Alan Zweibel, who was an original SNL writer and Work with me on my Broadway show, 700 Sundays, uh, was on a David Letterman show talking about this horrible auction lunch that he had where somebody purchased him to have lunch with him. And she only paid $22. And he was really depressed about that. But then worse, she has a, a toxic reaction to a seafood salad that she was eating. She has a terrible shock. He has to get an ambulance. She doesn't have insurance. So this, uh, this charity luncheon cost him $2,000. And he told the story on David Cho, and I thought it was, while he's, while he's talking, I'm writing him saying, Alan, this is the beginning of something. I don't know where it goes, but what a great way for these two to meet. Well, and I, I, had been, I had been contemplating trying to write a story about a relation, intergenerational relationship between an older man and, and a younger woman that was about friendship and love and trust, not in a romantic way. And, and that's how it started. Well, I love that the genesis is humor. You're cracking up at the beginning. And when I s learned about the beginning of this, I was like, well, that sounds like Tiffany to a T. But this movie, Tiffany, takes you down other beautiful roads, roads that I'm so happy to see you go down, like it's fun to watch on the screen. So the humor part, you knew you had that, obviously. How did you feel about the rest? Because this is a very beautiful story, a very kind of heavy story. Well, I felt really good about everything. And uh, the only thing I had an issue with is when Billy was asking me to cry. And I was like, uh, I've been spending 39 years of my life suppressing tears, uh, not crying in front of people. Uh, do you know how hard it was to train myself to turn all tears into jokes and laugh? And like, he's like, well, I need you to cry. I want you to cry. I'm like, I, can't, I can make a cry face. 
but don't cry. He's like, no, let's just cry. I'm like, I can, I can give the, the, the emotion of crying, but not actually cry. He's like, no, I want you to cry. And I'm like, ah, ah, ah. And, and he got it out of me. How did you, what, what did you have to think about, Tiff, for that to happen? I actually just stayed in the moment, just listen, yeah. listened, listened. That that's was, something that yeah. Billy really taught me, like just, like I, I knew that already, but just to really not think about myself and think about what is happening right mm -hmm. now, be right here, right now, listen, be there. Um, and it was hard because I do it with my friends in real life, but to do it with the whole crew around mm -hmm. and, you know, and I'm just, I've been trained, I've trained myself to be like, when I'm hurting, when I'm feeling like, or, or when I'm feeling like busting out with the, you know, Viola Davis snot tears, just <laughs> make a joke, do something, laugh, swallow those tears, like do something yes. to make it go away. And Billy was like, don't do it. Wow. Just be. And, and the kid, the, I remember the shot, it was a close up of her and she's hearing the story about the secret sadness in my life. And I'm finally um, telling her. So the camera was behind me, so I could talk to her, um, uh, just move her into it, not even doing a dialogue from the, from the script, because the, you know I could always put that in because it was behind me. And I just talked to her gently, until, and she's, I'm fighting, and I just don't, and I got her to, we got the moment that we needed, and it was, it was thrilling as a, to watch, and it was thrilling, I have to say, as a director, to get her there. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we both learned a lot in, in, in that moment. That's what I love about, uh, uh, about making movies in particular, the wonderful surprises um, mm -hmm. that happen. And, the, and if you're willing, like she was, um, right from the first day to, to go there and, and be this person. And, and yes, the hilarious Tiffany is in the movie for sure. But there's another side of her that I always sensed about her once we started to know each other, mm -hmm. that we were able to, you know, get into the movie and she's spectacular in the film. Yeah, now I can cry at the drop of a dime. Well, anywhere, anytime. <laughs> well by the way, speaking of that, Miss, I don't know if you know this, Billy, I'm sure you do, but your girl here won a Grammy Award for best comedy album. Mm -hmm. And I was so incredibly moved. She was up against Jim Gaffigan and Jerry Seinfeld and kind of the, the guys who are always in the running. And there's Miss Tiffany and she gets a call while she's on the set of her show, Kids Say the Darndest Things. And she can't believe that this is truly happening. For me, I'm just happy with being nominated personally. I've won, that been means, nominated a couple of times. You say, what? I've been so, <laughs> you've been nominated a couple of times. Yeah, I've been nominated a couple of times for some things. But I just And I love, I just, what? You just want a you Grammy. Just love being nominated. I just, I just want a Grammy. No. I just, are you, are you serious? And living in that moment with you, Tiffany, are you still thinking about it right now? I'm about to cry. Right <laughs> <laughs> swallow, swallow. Wait, no, let. I don't know what to do. Hoda, your skin looks amazing. You look gorgeous today. <laughs> I'm sorry, I want to know what the treatment no, is. You are I mean, doing your shoulders it. Shoulders look so smooth and soft. You know what you're doing, <laughs> Tiffany? You're doing it again. You're doing it again. But to, not only did you have that moment, Tiffany, those little, those little girls watching, you had it. And all I could think of was you just made everything possible in a nanosecond. Right? I just, I felt like, first of all, wow, I won this second. It was Wow, these young ladies no are our real. future. I and really they would. just realized that they can do anything. Mm. And in any moment, they can be blessed with, with whatever they desire. And all I desired was to bring joy and happiness. That's it. That's all I've ever desired. And bring joy, happiness, wherever I go. Billy, did you know Tiffany's backstory, her, her life story? Did you know about... I did not, not until, not until we met and then I read her book and, um, and then we talked a lot about it. And, um, you know, that's w w for sure. I know having lived longer than, than both of you, that the longer, you know, we're here and the more material you have to infuse your work with, with real good stuff, you know, the, and if you're real honest about it and, and um, there's so much to draw on. And her life is, 
it's full of amazing twists and turns and and hardships and joy and and that's who you see and i saw that moment um uh, when she when she was told that she won and, and i was moved because i know how important it was to her but also how grateful she was and 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 is for the success that she's having and i think that was you know really disarmingly beautiful and The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nike News with Lester Holt. Make the most of your day with... Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. In a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. I joined Ellen on her set, what's been a difficult year for her personally and for her show. Very few people go through such huge public humiliation. How can I be an example of strength and perseverance if I give up and run away? Killer Role, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Your, your character, Billy, in this movie um, suffers from dementia. And I, there was a beautiful line, I'm trying to remember it, and I don't remember it exactly, but you basically said you want to laugh. You don't want to be afraid anymore. You want to write your last project. I was just picturing everyone at home, no matter what you're dealing with, that would be what you want. How did you, how did you get into character? What were you thinking about in those moments? Well, the, the, the genesis for the character was, was twofold. Um, I was dealing with a, my last remaining relative, um, who was an aunt who was a, a novelist and, a, and an editor for the Book of the Month Club. And it was a really brilliant woman who started, as she said to me, I'm losing my words. And I thought that was like so mm -hmm. impactful. So when Alan and I started writing, we channeled uh, together um, a writer uh, at SNL who we both really loved and respected named Herb Sargent. And uh, when SNL first came on in 75, you know, Herb was in his 50s and nobody else was. And he was this senior writer who was really in charge of Weekend Update and writing jokes for that and editing. And, and I thought, well, that's a great prototype. And then I just channeled in, what if a comedy writer was losing his words? And, 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 he, and he's got this past that he, he needs to get out and, and, and give to the world and to his kids. And he can't do it because he's getting all of this, this interference. And um, so that, that was really, I thought it was really a kind of a poetic and, and an interesting kind of guy to play. So it was not that it was easy, but I was, as one of the writers, I was in him for you know a year year and a half um until it was time to get to the set and then mm. then it would just you just let it go mm -hmm. and just so it feels true um it's so beautiful i think people will expect a comedy but we'll get i mean we'll get so much more and i'm looking at you guys and i i feel like you're in different stages of your love lives i mean billy i think you've been married for 50 years to janice yeah it'll be 51 right? years in june 51 years and <laughs> tiffany you in common, 51 days. No, more than that. <laughs> no, no, more than that. Weeks. 51 yeah, weeks. But Billy, you've you've had a long, beautiful uh, marriage and Tiffany is in love and it's fun to watch. I feel like we get a front row seat to something so beautiful. But uh, yeah, I know you don't want to give advice on this kind of thing, but what advice would you have if, if Tiffany wants to have a, a beautiful, long relationship? Just be who she is. Oh. Just be who she is. I mean, um, you know, he's a lucky guy. So are you, Tiff, you're in love? Yeah, I love him, yes. Oh. Oh. Are you in love, Hoda? I'm in love, too. 
yeah, everybody. Common. Do, you, do you see yourself like long runway with Common? Like, do you see yourself in rocking chairs on a front porch way down the road? Well, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to have a front porch, but my backyard <laughs> is going to be off the chain. And we definitely will be in the backyard sitting on one of those long <laughs> bench swings with the blankets on our knees. And I'll be reading stories to them. And then I'm going to say, oh, then I'm like, I'm in the garden. You can watch. And then I'm going to bend over and pick up, pick the weeds out the garden. Yeah. <laughs> I love your love story. <laughs> so many things to love. Um, you know, I was just, I, I was looking back at when Harry met Sally oh, yes. and really how many years ago was that? Was that 30? More than 30? 35, it was 1989. Yeah. Do you still, Tiff, you saw when Harry met Sally. Yeah, I love that movie. What'd you love, what'd you love the most about it? I love the dynamics of their relationship and how it like grew, it blossoms like right in front of you. I love that stuff. Mm. Well, why do you think that one, Billy, ran the test of time? Um, and still does. It's yep. amazing um, uh, because it's real, and you know people fall in love, um, and you know there's, it's difficult sometimes to get to that place. And I think it's very human. It was a, a brilliant script and, and greatest director um, uh, and, and uh, you know, an acting partner beyond, beyond belief, you know, at that time. And so I was really blessed with, with that. And, and I'm blessed with this because this is a similar kind of mm. unlikely friendship um, that, you know, to have a friendship and the love story that's not with romance in mm. it. Um, mm -hmm. almost makes it more romantic in a way. It, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's, uh, there are moments where, you know, you want them to be together, mm -hmm. um, but it's, a, it's about empathy and it's about caring. And, um, you know, the, the more I, 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 you know, got to know Tiffany, she's a, she has a great deal of empathy for people. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that was just easy to tap into. Tiffany, do you think you guys will be friends for the long haul, you and Billy? Yes, that's my <laughs> uncle. <laughs> that's your uncle. It's All right. Uncle. That's my uncle Billy. Oh, well, we love you guys. Thank you so much. We can't wait for everyone to enjoy this movie, man. You got a home run on your hands. Oh, thank you so thank much. You. All right, you got it. Bye, Tiff. Bye, Billy. All Bye, right, Billy. I'm going to need some of them skim tips. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. nice. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. A huge lift is underway for one of the most celebrated cities in this country, Cleveland, Ohio. Yes. This is the greatest location in the nation. <laughs> We're having a baby. Wow. The big reveal is under the lid. <laughs> hey now. Things are looking brighter, so we want to help you find the fun in 21. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. I joined Ellen on her set, what's been a difficult year for her personally and for her show. Very few people go through such huge public humiliation. How can I be an example of strength and perseverance if I give up and run away? Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Boom. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Congratulations to Lester Holt, the most trusted TV news anchor in America, on receiving the prestigious Edward R. Murrow Lifetime Achievement Award for a career dedicated to excellence in journalism. Tonight, the CDC's new outdoor mask guidelines. What change that allowed this new recommendation to be made? If we do nothing, what happens to a city like Houston? You're going to repeat this movie over and over again. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. 
an awareness outfit to the Yankees' home opener so Giancarlo Stanton could see me. My plan was to distract him so he dropped that routine pop fly because he was too busy watching me be fly. But hey, you get to see it first. That is Tiffany Haddish co-hosting with Billy Crystal last weekend the Feeding America Comedy Festival, an event that raised money for the hunger relief organization. Haddish and Crystal will co-star in an upcoming movie called Here Today, directed by Crystal. That film is the latest stop on a life-altering three-year ride for Tiffany that began with a breakout role in the 2017 box office smash Girls Trip and has continued with movies, television, commercials, a stand-up comedy special, and a historic turn hosting Saturday Night Live. Tiffany and I got together last year for a Sunday sit-down around the release of The Kitchen, a gangster film where she stars with Melissa McCarthy and Elizabeth Moss. Step off my business. <laughs> Baby, it's my business now. Tiffany Haddish knows how to handle her business, on screen and off. I've grown up around that type of environment. I know how you have to move around those type of men, how you need to communicate with them in order to demonstrate some sort of power. What do you wear to something like that? You get dressed up? Are you kidding? And when I found out Melissa was on and then Elizabeth Moss was on, I'm like, oh, oh, this is about to be super fun. Now, mind you, I didn't know neither one of them, and I, there was a small part of me that was like, what if they're like divas? What if they're like super Hollywood chicks? Like, well, and I know how to deal with those. I'm gonna be like, oh, okay, hi, and then get out their face, <laughs> right? And and what so, were you gonna be like? Oh, okay, hi, and then get out of here. <laughs> you know, you know, you don't talk to those people too long. But you didn't have to do that with them. Didn't have to do okay, that with good. them at all. <laughs> Turns out they weirdos just like me. <laughs> So we laughed a lot. We did a lot of online shopping. I got them to try things they never had before, like uh, pickles dipped in Kool-Aid powder. Wait a minute. Um, pickles in Kool-Aid powder? Oh, my gosh. Have you not had this? No. OK, they said it was nasty, but that's because they don't have the, the palate. That's a hood thing. That's some gangster stuff. The 40-year-old Haddish grew up in South Central Los Angeles. Her childhood was marked by pain. Tiffany's father left the family when she was three. She was still a young girl when her mother suffered brain damage in a car accident and became abusive. I've heard a lot of comedians who've had difficult childhoods say they were doing it to make other people happy. I would try to make my mom laugh and try to make her cool because if she was laughing, she wasn't hitting. So where does this shine come from? How were you able to be so full of energy and laughter and light when you had so much um, trouble? Because I was trying to escape from the trouble. Is that I was what trying it was? to escape from the trouble and and uh, you know, what it say, uh, to get rid of the darkness, you gotta turn on the light, you know, and I feel like I am the light. Tiffany was twelve when she and her siblings were placed into foster homes. She began to see that her light could take her places. I started working as an energy producer in high school. So somebody would pay you 50, 100 bucks to go to the party and just yeah, it set started, it off? Yeah, it, it started out that low. It didn't end up <laughs> But uh, yeah, they would pay me to like come to a, a bar mitzvah, a wedding, and like MC or just dance, just be there to get people dancing. When Tiffany was 16, her social worker gave her a choice. You can either go to the Laugh Factory Comedy Camp or you can go to psychiatric therapy because something is wrong with your child. Easy choice. And, and I was like, which one got drugs? She said, you'll definitely be on drugs if you go to therapy. So, boom, I go to the comedy camp. I want to be a huge star. Not physically, but I want to be big. <laughs> and here I am today, you know, 20-some years later, telling jokes. Hanish eventually graduated from camp to the stand-up stage. But those early years of comedy were not always filled with laughs. Tiffany was homeless, living out of her car, until a fellow future star named Kevin Hart helped to change her life. I would always pull up like maybe five or 10 minutes late so nobody could see my car, because I had all my clothes, everything, suitcases all in the car. So one day I pull up a little late and he was there like the same exact time. He's like, what the hell going on in here? What's all this? What, what's, uh, you live in your car? And he was like, well, you can't be sleeping in a car in the streets. I'm like, what? I live in Beverly Hills. I sleep in Beverly Hills. I'm doing just fine. The police wake me up every morning, OK? <laughs> so he was like, Tiffany, no, no. And he gave, he gave me 300 bucks, said, find yourself a place for the week. And then write out a list of goals of what you want to do and start accomplishing those goals. 
And then I started attacking those ghosts. Haddish began to land small roles on television shows like Who's Got Jokes? I gave her five. Yes, yeah, five. And That's So Raven. Please exit through the gift shop as if you had a choice. In 2013, she played a recurring role on the BET series Real Husbands of Hollywood, starring Kevin Hart. Look like more than just your phone died. But Tiffany's breakthrough came just three years ago with a scene-stealing role as Dina in the hit 2017 movie Girls Trip. I just want to say hi, that's all. No, no, no. 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 What the hell's wrong with you? It's Saturday night. That fall, another big moment as Haddish hosted Saturday Night Live in a historic performance that earned her an Emmy Award. All my friends are telling me, Tiffany, you a star now. You big time. You balling out of control. And I'm looking at my bank account like, uh-uh. Once it was all done, I was just like, Phew. okay. I made that history. Yes. I did that, because that was history. I, I mean, know. I was the first African-American female stand-up comedian to ever host, which I thought was crazy, because I just knew Whoopi Goldberg did it, but she just appeared in some sketches. She's never hosted? Never hosted. I thought Wanda Sykes did it. I, talked to, I, mean, I called all, all the legends, everybody that I was like, the greatest, the best of the best has had to have done this. And they're like, nope. And then I was like Googling, and then I went, went through all the archives. We looked at every episode. I'm like, oh. I'm literally about to make history. I always wanted to be the first black woman to do something. Booyah! <laughs> do you ever stop and go, wow, the last two years have been insane for me? Well, every morning when I wake up, I'm like praying and I'm thankful and grateful. So I always try to find the good in everything. Because some days I suck. Like, sure. I mean, I'm tired as hell right now, but I look good. <laughs> in a surprising twist, Haddish's skyrocketing career may be headed next for Japan. I have no idea what you just said. I just asked you if you speak Japanese. Where did you pick that up? Well, I went to Japan to do comedy for the troops. I started watching Japanese television, and I was like, man, this is pretty entertaining, especially the soap operas. And I didn't see any black people on the soap operas, and I thought, oh, what if I'm the first African-American to be on a Japanese soap opera? That would be dope as hell. So when I came back to the States, I got Pensler's Japanese 101, and I start playing those discs in the car when I'm sitting in traffic, you know, LA traffic, you sure, sit yeah. in the car for two, three hours at yeah. a time. So what happened to the Japanese soap opera idea? I'm just waiting for a call. <laughs> How has the Japanese soap opera starring Tiffany Haddish still not happened? We need it. And Long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. Cleveland. Our across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight: the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Right now on NBC News Now. They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there, of uh, violence and persecution in their home countries. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen.
Oh, today all day, looking for a hot and delicious date? <laughs> Who is it? Up next on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada is taking you on a date with dates. And it'll be hard not to fall in love. First up, she's making the perfect sweet and salty snack, miso almond date bites. Then she's going to whip up a creamy date shake. And then to top it off, a French toast smothered in a gooey date caramel. I do get hangry sometimes, shockingly. You would think because I'm always cooking, I never get hangry. But you know what? It just happens to the best of us. I have been dating for a long time, and no, it's not what you're thinking. I have been eating dates, dates, for a long time. I grew up around them, especially during Ramadan when we would eat them to break our fast. And since then, I've been absolutely hooked and I hashtag cannot stop dating. I want you to be just as obsessed with dating as I am, so I'm gonna show you three of my favorite recipes. First up, we've got my miso almond date bites, which are salty and sweet. Then I'm gonna show you how to make my super simple vegan date shake. And finally, we're gonna make my favorite French toast with an almond butter date caramel. When you're shopping for dates, let me tell you something important. Make sure you're looking for the medjool variety. These are a lot sweeter and chewier than their other counterparts, which tend to be a bit drier and not as great to bake with, or cook with, or eat as a snack. I like to eat these plain as well, which is why I look for a nice, delicious, chewy, sweet medjool date, because you want something that's a nice, sweet snack, but you don't want anything that's dry. These miso almond crunch bites have everything going for them. They've got some umami from the miso, some crunch from the almonds. They're the perfect snack to keep in the fridge for when you want something a little sweet, but you still want to eat something wholesome. I'm putting in a solid amount because I love a date. These are going to act as a really nice base, a really sweet and chewy base. It's going to allow these bites to stick together, and we're not going to add any other sugar. That's way too many, but I don't care. So I got my dates in my blender, and now I'm gonna add my almonds. I'm using just raw almonds here. These are gonna add the nice crunch to these bites. We love a lot of texture here. Now, to seal the deal, to seal those almonds in, I'm gonna add a little bit of almond butter. You can feel free to use the peanut butter or cashew butter. If you have any other butter in your pantry, feel free to use it. The almonds and the almond butter make this snack super wholesome and delicious. Now, we're gonna add some shredded coconut. Make sure you use the unsweetened variety here because the dates are already gonna add a lot of sweetness to the snack. So pretty. We're gonna add a little vanilla extract, just for a little vanilla. And finally, I'm gonna add some white miso paste. This is made from fermented soybeans and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking about miso soup. Stop that train of thought, halt it right there. This is just gonna add some nice umami flavor and balance out that really nice sweet date and almond combination. Gonna finish this off with a little pinch of salt just to bring everything together. Pull out that sweetness. Little pinch, not too much. And then we're ready to blend. Are you ready? I'm ready. Feel free to scrape down the sides if you need to. I need to. Just to get everything nicely incorporated. What you're looking for with this dough is to have some nice texture. So we don't need everything to be completely pulverized. Totally fine if we have some little bigger or smaller pieces of almonds. That's just gonna really contribute to the crunch. This is what we're looking for. As you can see, it's a bit thick, it's a bit sticky. This is gonna be great because it's gonna help us form it into our little bites. I wish you could smell this. It's like warm and salty and sweet. And I haven't even tasted it yet. Hmm, okay. I'm using a really cute cookie scoop here. We want it to be just shy of about a size of a golf ball, but you can make them bigger or smaller if you'd like. I like a little bite-sized bite I can just grab from the fridge when I want something a little sweet and salty. As you can see, this is what we're looking for. You can see a little piece of date here. You've got some different sizes of almond pieces. This is good. We like this. We like texture. It's a work of art. We love this bite. Look at how cute. First one done. My biggest struggle with no-bake recipes like this one is that it really is a challenge <laughs> to get everything to the parchment paper uh, before I eat it all. But I'm doing okay so far. I did sneak a little bite, though. Don't tell anyone. 
The dates make it really nice and sticky to form into a little ball as well, which is really great. They add a little sweetness, they allow it to adhere together. See, this is why I love dating. Look at that, super cute. I always have this in my fridge or freezer because I'm always a little hungry. <laughs> I always like to snack, so this is really nice to know. I feel secure when I have this in my freezer or fridge. We're almost at the end. There is a light at the end of this blender tunnel. Pretty good. Just rolled out all of my dough into these cute little bites. And now I'm just gonna let them nap in the fridge for a little bit just to firm up while I melt my chocolate. Look at that. My little date bites have woken up from their nap in the fridge, and I think it's time to add some chocolate. I've melted my chocolate already, as you know. And now I'm just gonna do a really nice, cute drizzle. If you want a little more chocolate, if you want a little desserty vibe, feel free to completely submerge them. I'm just gonna do a nice little drizzle here. Look how smooth and melty that chocolate is. Look at that. All right, I'm gonna start drizzling. You don't need too much on your spoon. Go a little light-handed so you can get a nice, cute, delicate drizzle. Or you can go full force, do a really heavy drizzle. Whatever is up to you. The reason I like melting chocolate with coconut oil is that it makes the chocolate really smooth and nice, really drizzleable. Drizzleable. I just make up words, honestly, at this point. Got my own dictionary, drizzleable. Makes it easier to drizzle. Feeling like you want more of a chocolate moment, feel free to completely submerge. Take them for a swim. I will not judge you. In fact, I'll support you all the way. If you're getting fancy, you can even do a little crisscross action like this. I mean, come on. Picasso calls. He wants his date balls back. All right, last one. They look so cute. And now I have one final little step. Just gonna add a little flaky sea salt on top. It's gonna bring out that chocolate. It's gonna balance out the sweetness. I love using flaky sea salt over my entire life. You ready? It's a little. It also looks really pretty too. Those big chunks of flaky salt. So pretty, it's so fancy. These bites are gonna take another little nap in the fridge for about 30 minutes. I want this chocolate to firm up and then they'll be ready to eat. What a successful nap. I mean, look at this, so pretty. You've got that nice chocolate drizzle, a little salty contrast. You know what? I should probably take a picture of them before I dig in, so I'm gonna do that. They look too cute not to. Just straight on the tray. Real life action, you know? I've gotta commend my own drizzling skills. I, I just have to. Have a moment for myself. Okay. I think I'm ready to taste. You know, I thought I was gonna plate them. I had this already, but I'm just gonna eat them straight from the tray because I can't wait. I just can't wait. Okay, here I go. Mmm. <laughs> What's that little almond piece in there? So sweet. The dates, <laughs> something in my teeth. The dates are so nicely sweet. The almonds add substance, a little crunch. That chocolate on top just seals everything together. And the salt brings all of the flavors out. And that miso, it gives this sort of savory undertone. There's a little salt, just trying to pick up the salt. No salt left behind, you know what I'm saying? Mm. These are so good. You guys have to try these. You guys have to try these. <laughs> Little crunch. It's the best taste of protein. Yeah? Yeah, it is.
So have I convinced you to eat more dates yet? No? Okay, that's kind of crazy. Well, challenge accepted. I'm gonna go grab the ingredients for my irresistible date shake and show you how it's done. Right now on NBC News Now. They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there, uh, violence and persecution in their home countries. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. This is about 50 votes. If you can't get bipartisanship here, where are you going to get it? If China decided to cover this up, can we ever actually get a definitive answer? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Not to brag or anything, but there are a lot of date farms in my home of Southern California. And with the date farms comes date shakes. I wanted to make a super creamy and delicious date shake, but without any of the dairy. But shh, I'm telling you, they'll never know. Okay, I've got to preface this recipe by telling you something. It is so easy to make, you'll never believe it. I'm just gonna add all of my ingredients into my blender and it does all the work for me. I've got my dates here. They're pitted. Don't leave any pits in there. That may not end well for you. Adding them straight into my blender. To make that super creamy milkshake vibe, I am using frozen bananas. This is a great way to rescue any of your ripe or nearly perished bananas that have just kind of been sitting on your counter for a while. Freeze them, make banana bread with them, make this date shake, super versatile. Also, when you're freezing your bananas, make sure to just cut them up into cute little slices like this. It'll make it a lot easier to blend. I like the nice little ice cream vibe that these bananas will give the date shake. Super good and flavorful. And the bananas add even more natural sweetness. In we go. A couple more things I'm adding. Some vanilla extract. And because I really want to feel hugged by this date shake, I'm going to add cinnamon because we all know cinnamon is like a hug in spice form. You know, do you agree with me? I agree with me. Adding my cinnamon. Perfect. Now to blend everything together, I'm going to use some unsweetened almond milk. You can totally use another non-dairy milk option. An oat milk or a coconut would be really nice here as well. Adding my almond milk into my blender. Beautiful. Now all we do is blend. Wasn't that so easy? It's kind of crazy. I shouldn't have, but I did. Here we go. Prepare yourselves. I'm really excited. I think we're done. Now all I'm going to do, pour it into my glass and enjoy. Hmm, okay. I mean, look how creamy that is. <gasps> that was it. That was our recipe. I need to send a picture to my parents. They're still in Southern California. Don't be really jealous. Okay.
Okay, perfect. Now I get to drink it. So thick. It's too good. It's crazy that this is a plant-based milkshake. It's so creamy. It's so velvety, but there's no milk in it. We love a vegan date shake vibe. So good. Mmm. So cute. So good. I could eat this forever. Eat it, drink it. I could drink it forever. My final recipe that really celebrates the magic of dates is an almond butter date caramel that you will want to put over your entire life, but we're just gonna put it on some French toast. I'm gonna go clean my blender and get the ingredients. I joined Ellen on her set, what's been a difficult year for her personally and for her show. Very few people go through such huge public humiliation. How can I be an example of strength and perseverance if I give up and run away? Hi everybody, good morning, welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. What's about to happen on our plaza is you're all going to get your very first COVID vaccine. I'm excited. She's excited. Three, two, two one, check. Yes. So grateful. Is that close to prom? Here we go. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Our Across America journey here in Louisville, Orlando, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow of a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. This is about 50 votes. If you can't get bipartisanship here, where are you going to get it? If China decided to cover this up, can we ever actually get a definitive answer? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. In college at Berkeley, whenever I went to breakfast with my friends, they would always go for the eggs benedict, the veggie omelets. But for me, I only had eyes for the French toast. There was a restaurant pretty close to campus called La Note that had one of the best French toasts I've ever had. It had a really nice and sweet, crisp exterior, and I knew I wanted to replicate something just like that in my own kitchen, but with a twist. So, inspired by the French toast of my dreams, we are gonna be making a French toast with an almond butter date caramel. We're gonna start by making an almond butter date caramel that is so luscious you will wanna drown your entire life in it. But today we're just gonna put it on some French toast. Let's start. Added some dates in my blender. We're gonna add a little bit of almond butter. The almond butter is gonna balance out the sweetness of the dates really nicely. To sweeten this up a little further and to add a little bit more of that caramel undertone, we're gonna add some coconut sugar. To make a super luscious and velvety caramel, we're gonna add some vanilla almond milk. I'm using vanilla here, but if you don't have a vanilla, if you just have an unsweetened, you can add a little touch of vanilla extract. Blender is truly my kitchen BFF, so now all we're going to do is blend it right up. And caramel will await us on the other end of this. Okay, I think we're looking good. Look at how luscious that is. 
And of course, a traditional caramel is made by heating sugar up on a stove, but this is my version of a caramel that uses dates. Now you can see why I wanna put this over my entire life. Our almond butter date caramel is ready. All it needs now is some French toast, so I'm gonna go grab the ingredients to make it. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nike News with Lester Holt. It's time to make our French toast. I've got all of the usual suspects here. My eggs, my cinnamon, my vanilla extract, and I also have some milk. I'm using almond milk here, but you can use your favorite. Going to crack two of my eggs into my beautiful little pie dish here. Cute. Perfect. I'm going to whisk my eggs together until you don't see any separation between the yolks and the white. I'm really putting my entire body into this. <laughs> Whisking eggs, morning workout, perfect. French toast, workout of your day, okay. I'm on board. Okay. This looks nice and smooth. Now I'm gonna add some of my almond milk. Vanilla extract. Vanilla extract for me is a must when I'm making French toast. I just love that little extra sweetness, that little essence, really brings it to life. Little pinch of cinnamon now. We want this to be super smooth, super uniform. It's gonna be a nice little bath for our slices of bread. I'm gonna add a little coconut oil to my pan, let it melt, and then that's gonna be perfect for me to fry the bread in. Time to dredge our slices of bread in my little mixture here. I'm using sourdough bread here because I love that tangy taste. It's my favorite kind of bread. We're gonna let the bread really soak up that egg mixture. And by the way, French toast is a great use for your stale bread. So if you got any stale bread in your pantry, it's time to make some French toast. I'm gonna flip this over. Make sure it really soaks up all of that goodness. It smells really good already. Which I know is crazy because we haven't even cooked it. One last step before I cook my French toast. I'm gonna add a little sprinkle of coconut sugar on both sides because I want that really sweet crispness on the exterior. Look 
at that. It's gonna get some nice color as well. Now we're going straight to my pan. Hmm. You know what? No, I'm adding a little extra sugar on top. So we want to cook these until they're nice and cooked through, golden brown on both sides, about three to five minutes per side. This is a great brunch recipe, a great breakfast recipe, and honestly, a great dinner recipe too. Like, who are we kidding? We can have French toast for dinner. There are no rules. I like pan frying these in coconut oil as well because I think it plays really nicely with that coconut sugar. All right, we are going to flip. You know, I consider myself a patient person, but then when I'm cooking French toast, I'm like, hurry up. Can't wait all day. It's not even that long. I don't know why I'm being so dramatic. Just gonna flip my second piece. Look at that color, looking so golden. Ready for a photo, ready for some caramel, some date caramel. All right, these are looking beautiful. I'm gonna transfer them to my plate. So I'm hungry. Do we think they're ready for their caramel? I think they're ready. All right. It's thick, it's luscious. I'm gonna be generous here. Nothing wrong with a little thick drizzle. Gotta dip in for some more. I really just went for it. <laughs> I was trying to be delicate before and now I'm just straight up going for it. I like having a little pool of caramel on the side. It looks really delicious. I'm gonna add some berries just to sidle up next to that date caramel, sit on top of it. They kind of stick nicely onto that caramel too. <laughs> a little powdered sugar. You can't tell me you don't want this. You just can't tell me you don't want it. It looks so pretty. I think my note would be proud. I should probably send them a picture. Maybe I'll slide into their DMs. <laughs> oh, it looks so pretty. The almond butter caramel, while delicious, it is a brown color and so is bread. So by adding pops of color, like these berries, that powdered sugar, just really brings all of those colors and flavors to life. I'm going in. I'm immediately overwhelmed, so I don't know where to go. <laughs> okay, okay, here we go. We're going for it. Gonna get a nice little crust. Add a berry. Okay, bon appetit. It's, I need a minute. That date caramel is like the best sub for a maple syrup. It's so much more flavorful, more complex. Those dates and the coconut sugar create this really nice, marriage of sweetness. I love using sourdough here too because it's sour, it's kind of tart. Because it's so fermented, it goes so well with the sweetness of the caramel. The berries really make everything pop. I mean, I'm not trying to have like a French toast off with La Note, but I don't know. I think I might, I think I might. And don't get me wrong, I love maple syrup. Sometimes we like switching it up. I love snacking on dates. They're my favorite thing ever. But this almond butter date caramel really shows how many things dates can do. We just love to date dates. They can do it all. We're back. I'm Anthony Contrino, and it is time to get saucy. We've got a brand new kitchen and new episodes coming your way this summer. Tune in to Today All Day, Mondays at 11 a.m.
right, time to break out the rainbow bandanas and the mismatched shoes because Punky Brewster's in the house. The beloved 80s sitcom that followed a bright young girl being raised by a foster dad is back and better than ever. Well, in the new season, Punky, played by Soleil Moon Fry, is now a single mother trying to get her life back on track after a divorce. But not to worry, because her best friend, as you saw there, <laughs> Cherry, played by Cherry Johnson, knows exactly what she needs. I figured you needed a hug. You can stop hugging, I'm fine. But just a few more seconds. <laughs> How do you always know? Because we've been friends since we were seven. And you text me last night at 3 a.m. and said, I need a hug and a box of wine. I had a tough day and accidentally watched The Notebook three times. Girl, you need a date. Thank you. That's so cute. And I love watching the old clips of you. And now here we have you both, Soleil and Sherry. Good morning both to, to both of you. Good morning. I miss you guys and oh, love you. No. So here's the thing, Soleil. People may not know this. You've, you've been wanting to bring this show back for years. And I remember we've interviewed you before and you were saying, hopefully, hopefully, well, now it's finally here. And you're not only starring in it, you're raising the bar, you're an executive producer. How does it feel to finally be here now talking about it? Because it's happening. This is a dream come true. I mean, you guys have been my extended family over at the Today Show for so long. And to have the amazingness of my childhood best friend, Cherry, who is still my best friend, Sweet. and for us to be able to be making this dream come true together is just incredible. And I have such gratitude. So, Cherry, what was it like, you know, walking back onto the set mm. And, and jumping into this character, because this isn't like a reboot. This is a continuation of your life. So what was that like? Yes, continuation. Yes. That's what we doing it, Al. <laughs> yes, it was like coming home, you know? Like, I've been away to college for so many years, and all of a sudden, I got a phone call, and they needed to come back home, is exactly how it felt. Wow. So, Leigh, the original show certainly didn't shy away from dealing with tough issues, and this continuation doesn't either. Why was it so important for you to continue that? Even, you know, talking about divorce, you know? It was so important for us to, to really hold on to the integrity and the authenticity of the original. And I think, you know, for, for us, Punky has always been the discovery and rediscovery of our Punky power. And I really feel like I'm rediscovering my Punky power again as well, but also creating dialogues around the household with friends um, that, that are about real things that are going on in our lives. And that was always so important to us and so important to the integrity of the show and, and the fans that grew up with Punky and are continuing to. And, and Cherry, the show does this great job of not only paying homage to the original, but you've got some Easter eggs, uh, uh, little, 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 little surprises for folks along the way. <laughs> Yes, they're hidden throughout the set, and we make mention to a lot of things that I believe our friends that grew up with us will remember. It's beautiful. I think our writers really, they grew up watching the show, so it was easy for them yeah. to jump in and continue the story between the family. You know, a lot we... And I have to say, we spent her birthday in the treehouse, and I said, babe, how are you doing? And she was like, I'm with my best friend in the treehouse still, and that's how it felt. It really felt like lightning in a bottle. Every day we got to work, we were in tears of gratitude because we're just so joyful to be able to share this with the world. That's awesome. So many of us wanted a treehouse, by the way. <laughs> we're out of time. And I think it's cool now that your kids can see it, and they can see you as kids. So it's just, it's great. So Soleil and Cherry, thank you guys. Congratulations for getting this off the ground. Thank you so thank much. You so we much. hope you love it. Punky bye Brewster bye. streaming now on Peacock, which is part of our parent company, NBC Universal. It is the all-star, all-female lineup you didn't know you needed. Best-selling author, actor, and activist, Busy Phillips. Grammy Award-winning singer, Sarah Bareilles. Tony Award-winning, Renee Elise Goldsberry of Hamilton. And legendary SNL writer and comedian, Paula Pell. Four grown ladies trying to be pop stars again. Strap in. When their one-hit wonder girl group from the 90s gets sampled by a young rap artist, the women reunite to give their pop star dreams one more shot. Okay, guys, full confession. I got to see three episodes <laughs> of Girls 5 Ever. Gonna be famous five ever. Uh, uh. Forever too short. Too Stop short. it.
While the show is very much a laugh-out-loud comedy, there's something very meaningful about seeing a group of women embracing their second chance at fulfilling a dream. It was a contest at the mall, Hoda. <laughs> and we all just showed up. No, I mean, I, I feel so grateful. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. Am I crying? I'm about to cry. The hardest year in all of our lives Someone called me Tina Fey, the best in the world, and offered me, like, my dream come true. Three, four months working with the most incredible women um, and sing with the most talented singers and pretend that you were a pop star. And I was like, I, like, fell on the ground. Girls five ever. Too early. I was very nervous to sign on. I was like, I think you called the wrong person. I don't know what you think I'm, like, I, this is not what I do. But I had so much fun. Everybody sing from your diaphragm. Okay, which one? There was this undercurrent of just gratitude to get to work, to be able to go to work and to be with other people and to do something creative that was joyful. How did you guys make it through without busting up in every take? Oh my because God. We did. <laughs> we were at the, at the very end of the shoot, we had, I mean, it was like the last hour where we were delirious and it was a line for busy that was so ungodly funny and they didn't warn us and we were so loopy and she just said the line and it was that church cry where you can't come back from it and it's like oh like everyone is about to kill us because we're about to rap on this entire season and we cannot get through it. We couldn't get through it. While the show is very much a laugh out loud comedy, there's something very meaningful about seeing a group of women embracing their second chance at fulfilling a dream. Great. A lot of us uh, right now, some are in our 40s, some of us are in our 50s, and I think you guys are in those categories. Um, and you feel like you, I mean, there's something about reclaiming a little bit of something. They succeed at, at, uh, at, at reclaiming their voice or just understanding that there's still value to who they are. We deserve it as women that are, that are getting older and getting better. Uh, so it's, it's an underdog story that has a, a victorious, you know, song to it that I feel is, resonates. Wait, can I just say, like, all of us, all of us on this Zoom, I would say, have are like in our prime now. I look at the work Paula does and Renee and Hoda, you and your life and my beautiful SB and your, you know, and I just think like, oh wow, this is where it's at. It's not at 23. Okay, so um, number one, Jenna called this like the Ted Lasso for women. Which it's got that, it's got that really, really funny vibe. And I bet you by the time this show runs, one of their songs is going to chart. Because we, really? we, we didn't get a lot of clips of their music. Okay. They're really good at singing together. Yeah. And it was just so fun. I literally, I was watching it from the set. I was like, oh my God, one more episode, one more episode. And didn't you say our friend Carson Daly is also? Carson has a well, cameo. tiny, tiny little bit. Well, you know, because they go back to the TRL days. And yeah. of course, that's Carson to the T. <laughs> well, and we got to shout out Meredith Scardino, who wrote it. She's and, got a, uh, she's incredibly yeah. talented. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Our Across America journey here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Right now on NBC News Now. They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there, of violence and persecution in their home countries. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Right now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska. Okay, no secret. Ed, Ed Helms has been cracking us up for years. <laughs>
<laughs> From his days as Andy Bernard in The Office to his turn as the wild dentist Stu in the Hangover trilogy. Now Ed is back with a new sitcom in the Peacock original comedy Rutherford Falls, where he plays the overly proud descendant of a small town's founding father. Well, Ed's character Nathan finds himself at odds with his community when the mayor calls for the removal of a local statue known as Big Larry. You can't move, Big Larry. Hi, Nathan. Come on in. The town charter is very clear. You have to commemorate the exact spot where the town was founded. That's history, Deirdre. You can't change history unless you got a time machine. And you don't, because if you did, you'd go back in time and tell yourself not to buy that blazer. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, Bobby. Coming in a little hot there. That was a sick <laughs> one. <laughs> My mouth is still open. <laughs> Ed, good morning. Good morning. How well, are you guys? Good. Great. That was great. a great clip. So a lot of people are looking forward to Rutherford Falls. So tell us if we set it up right. It seems to center around a very small town with some big problems, if you will. You guys nailed it. That's exactly the. <laughs> <Boom>. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. The town is. Uh, it, my, my character is Nathan Rutherford. The town is Rutherford Falls. I'm a descendant of the founder. Uh, <laughs> it's directly adjacent to a Native American reservation. Uh, my co-star Janice Schmeeding. Uh, it plays my best friend who grew up on the reservation. And our friendship is really sort of the, the core of this show and the uh, source of, it becomes a little more complicated as the show goes on. Yeah, and, and what's great about the show, Ed, Ed you guys have obviously, it, it's, a, it's a thorny question that a lot of folks are dealing with across the country, but for your show, you've got this really diverse staff and cast that's in front and behind of the camera talking about one of the most indigenous writers' rooms in television history. So, so how does that inform how you make the show as you move forward? Well, when we first started to get, you know, think about what the show was in the world where we wanted to tell these stories, uh, it, it just became clear that there was that there were a lot of Native American aspects to this show, and you know my 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 buddy Mike Schur and I, who first started talking about this, realized we're not equipped to tell those stories, and so uh, we roped in our our buddy Sierra Teller Ornelas, who we had both worked with, and she's Navajo, and that's really when the show kind of became what it is. That's the three of us collaborated and kind of really found uh, uh, the, the the themes and the, the world, everything locked in. And from there, it became clear that, that there was a lot more uh, Native American aspects to the whole show. And so as we staffed up, uh, we wound up hiring, uh, you know, I think a majority of the writer room, writer's room is Native American. There's a lot of the, of the cast that's Native American. So it really, is a meaningful moment of representation for that community and something I'm incredibly proud to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And and uh, you mentioned Michael Schur, you know, you worked with him at, at on the office of course. So does for office fans, does that give us any hope that maybe there's also an office reunion in the future? Uh, <laughs> I love this. You guys always ask. I, you of know, course we know it's coming. Come on, you know who we are. Great reunions. <laughs> but we buried it in the uh, middle. Did you like that, though? <laughs> um, so I think, unfortunately, the, that Mike Schur and I having a little mini reunion on this show is maybe the extent of the <laughs> office reunion that Wow. Uh, I'm not aware of anything uh, uh, in the works. That's Would you be open to it? Oh, my gosh. Guys, of course. Okay. I mean, okay. I, right. it, 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 we the, this is the thing. The cast of The Office loves that show as much as the fans. <laughs> like, we are, you know, yeah, it's it's... Yeah, well, before you, you leave us this you know, morning, well, what? I, I was just going to say, you know, Andy Bernard yeah. is a big banjo player. Uh, thank you. That's you what know. I wanted to get in. Go <laughs> and, for it. And, and the fact is, during the pandemic, yes. I understand yes. you have really taken those banjo skills I love it. to the next level. <laughs> 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 yes. Uh, yeah, I have hunkered down a little bit. There was a little phase there where I was, uh, I got a little too serious <laughs> about my banjo play. Oh, your look, I'm wearing the Wait, same Wait, Ed, shirt. your face looks really serious. Like, I thought, you know, I thought it would be like a joyful thing. Like, your <laughs> yeah. face is like... Steve Martin always <laughs> says you can't be angry and play the banjo. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm not angry. I'm just concentrating. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there is a big difference. Okay. Uh, All right. It's a difficult instrument. <laughs> we wouldn't know. <laughs> so we trust you on that one. Uh, Even uh, in spite of this interview, will you come back again? <laughs> Guys, I love being on. I, honestly, you. of course, anytime. Hey, bring your banjo with this. Maybe we'll do a little something. Ed, you thank duo. You. Do a little something. Oh, Ed, I Dylan, you play the banjo. No, Dylan's playing the piano. Craig <laughs> plays the violin. We can do something. Ed, thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. Right now on NBC News Now. They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there, of violence and persecution in their home countries. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. It does seem as if this White House doesn't want to bring a lot of high profile attention to the issue. What efforts might depoliticize vaccine hesitancy? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus for family dinners, family vacations, family anything, for traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit, plan your va visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. What's about to happen on our plaza is you're all going to get your very first COVID vaccine. I'm excited. She's excited. Three, two, one, champion. So grateful. That close to crime. Here we go. Chanel and I already started singing. So the whole song. The whole know, song. The song <laughs> is back in session at Bayside High. The classic sitcom Saved by the Bell returns for a whole new class of students and includes some familiar faces. Take a look. Aisha. What? Jamie challenged you to a football off and now he's meeting you on the field in 10 minutes? Oof, that sucks. I'd go with telling Jamie he's bad at football because he's about to do a football off in front of the whole school, but I didn't know if that was unrelated. Ugh, I'm a terrible mom, okay? I protect Jamie from everything. I fix his homework, I stand up to his bullies, I tell him he's a great chef, and now every night I have to eat his world famous raw spaghetti with water sauce. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am so excited for this and so can't wait to talk to you guys. Joining us this morning, Mario Lopez returning as Slater, Elizabeth Berkeley Lauren as Jesse Spano, and Hascaria Velasquez, who plays a new character, Daisy. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hey, hey. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, now so when you when you said you're so excited, did you did you mean that? Oh my oh, goodness. You should have heard us during the no, commercial no, no. break. She's talking about her I'm Money. so excited. I'm I did not even mean oh, to do that. Yeah. Good fun, great fun. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been so Al, great to see you, man. Good to see you, Mario, all you guys. It's like a, a six-way call yeah. right now. Right? All right, Mario, so you start us off. Um, you're back at Bayside. How would you describe this revamped version of the series? Well, you know, they're calling it a reimagining, and I just think they've done such an awesome job blending the nostalgia with an updated 2020 version with a really stellar young um, diverse, talented cast led by the beautiful Haskiti uh, Velasquez there. And uh, we've had so much fun doing this. And Tracy Whitfield, our, our showrunner, who we're blessed to have, who ran 30 Rock and the Mindy Kaling show and is very, very talented, 
um, just put together this world that I think really came uh, came through in a big way. And I'm so happy with the way it turned out. I hope people check it out. I've been saying before you have a, a turkey, try a little peacock, because I think you won't be disappointed <laughs> uh, with, with the new Saved by the Bell. And, and Elizabeth, I mean, how surreal was it to produce and star in this? You know what? It, <clears throat> the, this, this show is such a beloved show. <clears throat> Excuse me. And for so many years, this show has meant so much to so many people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we knew, like Mario said, the, the right ingredients, the right people, the right collaborators, this amazing new young cast, everything came together and it just felt like the right time. Um, and it was amazing to also produce. We got to participate in, in being able to cast these amazing talents like Haskiri, um, and it was quite surreal. I have to say, being back in the hallways of Bayside were incredible, especially with this with this guy here who I have so much history with um, in that iconic Max or in the hallway with those red lockers. But it was so beautiful to have the duality of a full circle moment, but then mm -hmm. new beginning. Hey, Scary, let me bring you in here. You weren't even born uh, when this show first aired, from what I understand. And as someone in the younger demographic, how does it feel to bring this show to a new generation and audience? I'm hoping to watch it with my kids, because I loved it. Yeah, um, I mean, I wasn't born when it when it first aired and when it was Ooh. out, but... Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> but the show has such a great following and such a great fan base that they kept it alive all these years. And I think for the new generation, me and my fellow castmates, I think we can only hope and, you know, we hope that we make justice to this show and it can run just as long as the original, mm -hmm. you know, Saved by the Bell. Um, and I hope we did it in a respectable way and kept that nostalgia that a lot of people love. Um, and I'm just really excited. Yeah. And I, can I just say I'm just so excited to be on the Today Show. Aww. I watch it all the time. And it's like I grew up, you know, I'm from Washington Heights, New York, the Dykeman area. So I. I watch it every morning, um, so it's a oh, full awesome. circle moment right now. Well, my friend, you are meeting the moment because you're on the Today Show, and you know I was just talking about it this morning. The reviews are fantastic; people are loving it already. So, congratulations! Soak it all in, my friend. I think we're really excited. I right am. Our, our world needs some joy, and our show has always brought that to people. And this new reimagining does that same. It it celebrates connection, relationships friendship and so hopefully families who are you know safely um celebrating the holidays can really get some joy from our show that's sweet well we certainly will it's my next show to binge watch thank <laughs> you guys so much for joining us uh and you can catch the new saved by the bell series starting today on peacock which is part of our parent company of course nbc universal Right now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska. I joined Ellen on her set. What's been a difficult year for her personally and for her show. Very few people go through such huge public humiliation. How can I be an example of strength and perseverance if I give up and run away? This is about 50 votes. If you can't get bipartisanship here, where are you going to get it? If China decided to cover this up, can we ever actually get a definitive answer? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Killer Role, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. My favorite character from the original is my dad, of course. People told me that I look like Mark, yes. And we actually have a lot of similar interests, which was funny to find out. I could relate to, to Zach's schemes completely. I think I, there's a constant nagging of trying to live up to my dad's schemes within the school of Bayside. Hi guys, I'm Mitchell Hogue, and I play Mac Morris on Saved by the Bell. Ah, Bayside. How would I describe Mac? 
I am the king of Bayside that has an abundance amount of privilege and pulls pranks to cure a luxurious boredom um, to gain attention. <laughs> How familiar was I with the original? I actually wasn't very familiar. I knew about it, um, but I actually didn't even watch the original to prepare, just because, yes, this is a reboot, but it's completely different in a completely new world. It's almost a spin off the same story, um, but all new people and storylines, and, and Tracy, our, our writer, did a beautiful job of that. So I actually didn't familiarize myself with the original a lot. I thought the original Saved by the Bell was hilarious. Hilarious, like there's a reason that it did so well. Um, I mean, each character was so distinctively, you know, established within kind of the relationships of each of them. Um, and I think that's what Tracy did with the, the new one as well, which is a beautiful thing. What appealed to me about telling a story was working with Tracy Wickfield, because the way she wrote it was brilliant. And also I think Due to my look, I do get a lot of different opportunities and roles to be, you know, the privileged white male and having a story where that's kind of exposed by other people coming in and showing me different ways. It was very attractive. Why is everybody so rich? The premise of the reboot is the original Bayside and kind of the bubble and the kids that live within it all are very privileged and are, you know, comfortable in their own habitual patterns. And then new kids come in um, that are from a, you know, a low income school and they kind of come in and pop the bubble of privilege and expose us to things that we didn't know about or things that we didn't even know existed. And we start to use our own privilege and kind of join hands with each other to help each other out and bring each other up. My favorite parts of filming were, ooh, there were so many. It's such a big ensemble that there were so many personal relationships and moments with the whole ensemble that I, I think just hanging out with when everybody was on set, you know, from the old crew to the new crew, and we would all be sitting there just kind of talking through their old stories and how it relates to ours, and it was always fun to compare that. You look amazing and your hair's fire. Working with Mark was great. He's he's such a just a professional and, and wonderful person to work with. I mean he we have so many similar interests that in the beginning we just related on a personal level and then kind of getting into work and him kind of telling me about, you know, fame and how to deal with that and kind of through the different years about what he's gone through and, and personal stories. It was just it's a, it's a great relationship with him. Working with Elizabeth and Mario was fun every single time. Mario is just, as my mom would say, a hoot. Um, he always is making us laugh and, and doing something on set that you didn't know that you could do. And then Elizabeth is just a sweetheart. She's, she's like a mom. Why do people still love Saved by the Bell? Number one, I think because we all need something a little bit nostalgic right now to comfort us. Um, I think that's why I'm really excited for people to see this new version of it because um, it does still tie in, you know, things from the original. And I also think it's just a show that included everybody and it was one of the first series and shows back then that did include everybody in, in a very communal way. Welcome to Today All Day. All day? Today All Day. All day. This is a long oh, way of asking, man, yeah, who's your okay. favorite character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. Yeah. I don't want the rap, <laughs> Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. We've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. 
Let's do the weather now. <laughs> okay. All you gotta do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. <laughs> look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. <laughs> will you judge us okay. in a cook-off? I yeah. will, and okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today All Day. Hello and welcome to Consumer Confidential on Today All Day. I'm NBC News investigative and consumer correspondent Vicki Wynn. Tune in each week for insider tips on the products and services that make an impact on your daily life. This week, we take a closer look at how the pandemic has transformed the travel industry. Our experts share tips for booking flights and hotels as the country begins to open. Plus, what to expect from cruise lines as they start to welcome passengers back on board. We are back with more of our Future of Travel series, and here we are one year into the pandemic. Many of us are really itching for a return to normalcy, mm -hmm. and that includes, of course, vaccinations. Yeah. Excuse me, vacations. What's yes, well, vacination, yeah. then vacation, yeah. maybe. Okay, there are cheap fares out there. There's definitely a new push toward book now, pay later deal. So the question is, should you snap up those bargains? Yeah, NBC's investigative and consumer correspondent Vicki wins on this. She joins us with what we need to know. Before we book a trick, uh, Vicki, good morning. Good morning, everyone. For the past year, many of us have been cooped up at home, counting down the days to that getaway. The good news, prices are way down. The bad news, it is still unclear when it will be safe to travel. But if you are willing to plan ahead and be flexible, your dream vacation may be within reach. Sunning on the beach, exotic locations, and European adventures. There's no denying the deals are there. We found $374 round-trip airfare from New Jersey to Hawaii, $132 a night at Disney World Resort, fly to Miami in style, only $193 for first-class airfare from Chicago, all with no change fees. But experts say it's still not safe to travel freely right now. I don't have a crystal ball, but uh, given the uncertainties in the near future, I'm thinking late summer or the fall maybe when we can travel more. Dr. Henry Wu is the director of Emory University's Travel Well Center. So if you've been fully vaccinated, is it then safe for you to travel? I do think the vaccination is certainly a great thing to have. I would certainly encourage it for travelers and really anyone when it is available. But I do think the general precautions about travel should still apply. Travel expert Emily Kaufman says you can plan for later. What would you tell people who are wondering, is now a good time to book? Now is a great time to book to take advantage of these fares. Airlines and hotels have revisited their plans with cancellations and change requirements. According to travel website Hopper, people are taking advantage. They've seen a 100% increase in demand for travel July 15th to August 15th. There's so much pent up demand for travel right now. Christopher Elliott is a travel consumer advocate. If you're booking right now, what should you be doing? Make sure that you can either cancel your flight or make a change without a penalty. If you're booking a hotel, stay away from the prepaid non-refundable rates because if you make a change in your plans, then you won't be able to get any of your money back. And while bundled airfare and hotel packages can save you money, it can be much harder to cancel, especially if you book through a third-party travel site. Last summer, we interviewed customers who struggled to get refunds on their packages. I have been waiting for two months for a refund. They would put us on hold and hang up, or they would transfer us and hang up. And that happened three times. This is all my correspondence with them, trying to resolve this and get my money back. Pre-pandemic, I was a big fan of the package deals. They made everything so simple. However, now I feel like they're more complicated if you need to undo them. I believe right now at this time, it's best to book directly with your airline or directly with a hotel. One popular trend during the pandemic, so-called book now, pay later travel plans. Think of it as a loan, complete with credit check, down payment, and monthly payments. The average interest rate is 15%, so if you miss a payment, it can add up. What should people know about these book now, pay later packages? You want to be very careful when you're making that purchase because there are rules when you push the dates, when you change things. There may be interest, there may be fees. Before you book anything, consider, is the destination accepting visitors from the United States? Are you required to test negative before boarding the plane, upon arrival, or before you can return? Does your hotel offer contact tracing and deep sanitization? Some hotels do provide free COVID tests. Regardless of when you travel, where you travel, or even your vaccination status, expect to take COVID-19 precautions. 
And when it comes to airfare, every airline has different policies and they are constantly changing. Some will let you cancel with a full refund. Others will let you move to a later date on the same trip or give you a voucher for later travel. The one constant is they're virtually all now waiving their change fees, which some industry insiders think could be permanent. That is a potential big win for us consumers. That yeah. certainly would be. Do really quickly, you, you hear a lot of talk about travel insurance. Like, is, mm -hmm. is travel insurance something that's worth getting? Yeah, well, the consumer advocate we interviewed thinks right now it is a good idea because anything can still happen, but you also need to read that fine print closely. He recommends so-called cancel for any reason travel insurance. You can usually get at least half of your money back for any reason, and that includes COVID-related cancellation. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Congratulations to Lester Holt, the most trusted TV news anchor in America, on receiving the prestigious Edward R. Murrow Lifetime Achievement Award for a career dedicated to excellence in journalism. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Ready actors. An indie horror film, a talented young actress, and a deadly shot. Dateline's newest podcast, Killer Role. Action. Subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. This morning, we don't know exactly when, but what we do know is when the cruise lines resume, some, like Virgin and Crystal, require everybody, passengers and crew members, to have been vaccinated. Analysts believe it's possible we could see the cruises resume as early as July. The cruise ship industry has never seen anything like it before. For close to a year, vessels have been in port, idle, sitting empty. More than 250 ships still without passengers during this unprecedented shutdown. Unlike restaurants, sports stadiums, schools, which open when governors and local governments say so, the lead authority that will decide when cruise lines can resume is the CDC. But so far, the CDC has issued no new health and safety protocols. Unfortunately, there's no one magic threshold that says now is the day. If we reach this point, we can go. The CDC declined to talk to NBC News, but those lack of rules have not stopped Americans from booking trips. Veteran travel agent Michelle Fee says her clients are tired of being cooped up at home. There is a thing called revenge travel. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. It is. <laughs> and what it is is people who have not been able to travel in the last year, possibly two, they are taking all the funds that they typically spend on vacation and they're going to take a bucket list vacation. The balancing act, new rules that don't ruin a vacation. We don't know yet what are going to be the rules to get into the hot tub or the swimming pools or, you know, just going up and getting a drink at a bar. If you're required to wear a mask just walking down the hallway, will your customers say, it's not a vacation for me. Well, I think some people will say that and others will say, I have so much pent up demand to travel that I'm going to go no matter what. The best clues of how it could work in the U.S. may come by looking at what works in Europe. Everyone must test negative before boarding. Masks required. Ships limiting the number of passengers. Under those rules, more than 350,000 people have cruised since last July in Europe. Only about 50 passengers have tested positive for COVID while at sea, according to the Cruise Line International Association. Similar rules could be adopted by the United States or go even further, as in Singapore, where masks are now required even when outdoors by the swimming pool. But some passengers say they're just not ready yet. So it was, it was a harrowing experience. 
Passengers Rick DiPino and his wife Wendy were trapped on the Zan Dam when the pandemic hit last March. Veterans of more than 25 cruises, they will never forget being turned away from port after port before being extracted like they were radioactive. Both lost close family to COVID. There's a reluctance to, you know, do another cruise until we see that this is safe, that people aren't getting sick and that you can really enjoy the cruise the way you would want to. If you're not ready to travel just yet, there's still plenty of fun to be had this summer, especially for kids, whether at camp or at home. Our experts share tips on how to keep the little ones safe and entertained. Stay tuned for how you can prepare for a season that may be without staples like chlorine and hot dogs. I recommend alternatives to avoid a summer bummer this year. Summer camp is back and campers are ready. What are you so most excited for? Sweating! I'm excited to see all my friends again. Are you going to have fun at camp? Yeah. Last year, 40% of day camp shut down for the summer, taking a toll on kids and parents. How tough was it for you last year not having your kids in camp? It took a lot of effort to find things to keep them busy. I think they got stir crazy and we felt like they were bored. It was a big hit for us because it would have been her first year where she's totally independent. They're me to have fun and socialize and be with their friends. But some camps stayed open and found that COVID safety plans worked. A survey of 90,000 campers and staff found just 0.1% tested positive for COVID last summer. So how did some camps manage to stay open and protect kids from COVID-19? I'm here at Woodmont Day Camp in upstate New York to show you what they did last year and what to expect this year. Sam Boric is the camp director. It has been such a tough year for everyone, kids especially. Why is camp so important this year? I think camp last summer was magical, and I think this summer it's going to be extra magical. Uh, mental health, it's such a challenge right now for kids. There's no structure. They're, the schedule is changing. They're in school for two hours. They can't be together. And camp is the opposite of all of that. And they had zero COVID cases last year. They credit daily temperature checks and health questionnaires. They kept activities outdoors and maintained distancing. This year, most of the staff is vaccinated and they're keeping everyone in pods of 15 per group. And with 50 acres, there's plenty of room to spread out for the pods. So while one pod is here at the Eagle's Nest, another pod can be here 30 yards away on the climbing wall or out here fishing with their pod at the lake. Another pod can be here practicing their aim at the archery range. Yes, the white counts for something, right? Equipment is sanitized between pods, and activities like meals, cooking, dance, and arts and crafts are now outdoors. I see it says arts and crafts on the building, but what's different about this year? In previous years, we'd go indoors to do arts and crafts, and this summer what we did is we moved everything outside, and then instead of having eight at a table, we'd have four. There'd be one camper at each corner, so they were outside, they were socially distant. While the staff is always masked, campers are only required to wear masks inside. Sam, there are some times when you're gonna have to come inside. In that case, what happens? So what we say at camp is it's only raining if I say it's raining. <laughs> okay. So drizzle, we're staying outside. Heavy rain will go indoors. Mm -hmm. When they go inside, every counselor has a fanny pack or a backpack. Inside they have these face coverings and then the hand sanitizer. And we have 30 cabins so the campers can be spread out, staying within their group. For kids who ride the bus, the policy will be masks on and windows open. For kids who don't ride the bus, parents will drop them off outside. And they've even converted their drinking fountains into hand washing stations. Hand washing and sanitizing was a big piece that we incorporated. And campers can expect to be more active. I know how good it feels to just move. What do you think about these kids? A lot of them have been couch potatoes for the past year. They've been stuck behind screens. Yeah. They've been virtual learning. I think getting outside, doing activities, they're gonna be physically exhausted. With summer almost here, confidence these safety plans will open the door for a lot of happy campers. How much are you looking forward to camp this summer and why is it so important for your kids? I'm so excited for our children. I'm excited for our community to have a sense of normalcy again. You know, so many parents are looking forward to summer camp, but what are some important questions we should ask first? Yes, this is really critical. It's a good idea to start with a camp that is accredited by the American Camp Association when it comes to COVID. You want to ask, what precautions are they taking? Are they keeping kids in pods so they can easily contact trace if someone gets sick? And are the activities outside and distance? Also, ask if they have daily symptom screenings. Thankfully, this is a year where there is a really good blueprint on how to have a safe camp experience. And for more, you can go to today.com where we have a story 
story up with tips and links to help everyone pick out the camp that is right for them. And also scholarships. That's a big thing. Apply early. Don't let money be a deterrent. True. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sign me up. I think it's yeah. time. Yes. I think I'm ready. <laughs> I know. All right. All Thank you, exactly. Vicky. joined Ellen on her set, what's been a difficult year for her personally and for her show. Very few people go through such huge public humiliation. How can I be an example of strength and perseverance if I give up and run away? This is about 50 votes. If you can't get bipartisanship here, where are you going to get it? If China decided to cover this up, can we ever actually get a definitive answer? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. It does seem as if this White House doesn't want to bring a lot of high-profile attention to the issue. What efforts might depoliticize vaccine hesitancy? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Summer break is anything but relaxing for millions of families this year, worried about how to balance work and kids at home. Being a parent has been really challenging this summer. I just tell them that, you know, this is a rough period that we are going through. They're not learning and doing things that they should be doing at this age. So should parents let their kids have a summer without limits or keep them on a strict schedule? I asked the experts, Dr. Jennifer Hsu, a pediatrician, and Dr. Harold Koplowitz, a child psychologist with the Child Mind Institute. What are you recommending parents do this summer? I, I think moderation is going to be the key word. We actually recommend that parents practice mindfulness with their kids. Spend a minute listening to how you breathe. I think we need to think of it as our new normal and what can we do to make it so that it is appealing and exciting for your kids. They say younger kids require more guidance. Try setting up short 10-minute windows of activities for them. 10 minutes where you're going to do coloring, 10 minutes where you get up and go play outside, 10 minutes where you do sidewalk chalk. You can fill up some time and they're not getting bored at any one thing. Teenagers need more social interaction, but that can be difficult with social distancing rules. It's a conversation with your teenager about boundaries, about limit setting, letting them make some choices. You might not hold so tight to a curfew, but you are going to hold pretty tight to who they congregate with. For kids of all ages, set up quarantines, small groups of friends they can hang out with who are limiting their contact with others to reduce coronavirus risk. The experts also suggest trying activities you can do with your children. I think it's also a great time for projects. The ease of let's make pizza. Let's figure out how we can make meatballs and spaghetti. And this summer, be more lenient with screen time. I say, cut yourself a break. One rule of thumb I say is if you're going to spend this much time on screens, you need to spend that much time exercising, doing some kind of reading. While the school year is over, our experts say it's a good idea to maintain a loose academic schedule to keep kids' minds fresh. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Philly Zoo at 2. There are many resources online that offer free educational videos, games, and lessons. Well, welcome back to our sixth and final lecture today. Of One of the most innovative comes from the Wave Learning Festival. Volunteer college students from across the country teach completely free three-week courses on everything from historical speeches to stand-up comedy and sign language. Okay, we're gonna start with A, it's A. 15-year-old Brianna Gomez from New York shows us what she learned. 
I just said, um, hi, my name is Brianna. Other students said they love the courses. The favorite thing that I learned was I learned how to write and give a good speech. All of my instructors were college students that were just really interested in the fields that they were going into. They were so passionate. While there's no one-size-fits-all approach to parenting during a pandemic, our experts say start by taking care of yourself. This morning on our ongoing series, Summer Safety on Today, an important message has to do with water safety, and Vicki Wynn has been looking into that. Vicki, good morning. Hey, good morning, everyone. Yeah, doctors are really concerned that more kids will be swimming unsupervised this summer. Why? Fewer summer camps are open, more parents are at home, working from home, juggling that with childcare, lots of distractions. And it only takes a few seconds for a child to slip into the water unnoticed. So this morning, I'm showing you some simple tips to keep your kids safe as they try to beat the heat this summer. The unmistakable sound of summer. Kids playing in the pool. But without proper attention, fun can quickly take a tragic turn. On average, more than 950 kids drown each year in the U.S. Drowning is the leading cause of unintentional death among kids ages 1 to 4. And it's not just pools you need to be worried about. Ponds like this and other natural bodies of water can also lure kids. So we brought in Mary O'Donohue. She's the Senior Aquatics Director at the YMCA to talk to us about some basic summer safety tips and also why you think this summer we need to be on extra alert with the COVID and everybody social distancing you know children haven't been in swim lessons they haven't been in school and a lot of places are closing down their camps some of the public pools haven't opened up and parents are at home working and distracted what worries you about that it takes as little as 20 seconds for someone to go under the water and not be able to get back to the surface there are some basic tips that you can evaluate uh, how your children are comfortable in the water okay I have my three girls waiting eager to get into the pool so let's go we are all suited up ready to go Emmy and Odessa, they're older, they know how to swim. Renly does not know how to swim yet, and this would be their first swim of the season, so what should we be doing right now? We're gonna look for a Coast Guard approved life jacket for non-swimmers, and you're also looking at the weight category. So this looks like it will fit her, it's 30 to 50 pounds. Okay. You wanna make sure it fits snugly. How does that feel, Boo? Good? Next, the big girls are up for a quick water competency check. We'll keep our social distance here. You wanna make sure that they can independently submerge in the water when they come back up, that they can turn around and look to see where the safest place is to get out or grab a hold of and be able to climb out independently. Check to see if they can swim the length of the pool and ask them to tread water for a minute. Water first, water first. No, come here, lay, lay, lay down. Okay, okay, okay. So Mary, what if you have a child that's not uh, really into being in the pool? And that's fine. Just let them be comfortable in how they are. Sometimes it's just sitting on the wall, putting their feet in. Having the uh, Coast Guard approved life jacket on will ensure that if they do get into the water, they're going to be safe. Pool toys are fun, but they can also be dangerous because they block your view of who's in the water. It doesn't look like there are any kids in the water right now, but there are. So make sure you take the pool toys out when you're not using them. For extra safety, consider a pool alarm. This one comes with a wristband that will let you know right away if someone falls in. It's also important to have a sturdy gate with openings that don't allow little ones to slip through and you want to make sure the gate is self-locking. And don't forget kiddie pools and above ground pools. Experts say children can drown in as little as an inch and a half of water. So empty those smaller pools after using them and remove the ladder from larger pools. And no matter what kind of water the kids are in, always designate a water watcher, an adult assigned to watch the kids at all times tips to keep your family safe while swimming this summer. And remember, even if your child is a good swimmer, fatigue kicks in as the day wears on. So set a timer, get them out, remind them to hydrate, give them a break, and put on that sunscreen. And for those inexperienced swimmers, the AAP recommends touch supervision. That means staying within an arm's length of that. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything for traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. 
The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. What's about to happen on our plaza is you're all going to get your very first COVID vaccine. I'm excited. She's excited. Three, two, one, champion. So grateful. Is that close to crime? Here we go. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Right now on NBC News Now. They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there, of violence and persecution in their home countries. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Killer Role, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. Okay, well, let me preface this by saying we aren't, we don't need to run out and panic and yeah. buy hoard. things and mm -hmm. hoard things. Absolutely not. It's just for you to be aware that you might have a harder time finding some things, and so you want to plan ahead. So let's show you the list when it comes to food. Hot dogs and bacon because of uh, an overall bacon. global Whoa. supply issue. The ketchup packets, I'm not so worried about that because there's plenty of ketchup to go around with the bottles yeah. and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. Chicken wings and chicken, that's becoming an issue due in part to the popularity of all these crispy chicken sandwiches that wow. are kind of added to fast food menus, like chicken is the new black. Mm -hmm. um, bubble tea, this is something personal and near and dear to mm -hmm. my heart. Those little bobas uh, could also be a, short, a shortage <laughs> of those. Coffee is another one. We're actually at a six-year low in the stockpile of coffee. So overall, mm -hmm. the whole situation is the global pandemic, mm -hmm. slowed production, and we're just sort of trying to ramp back mm -hmm. up. Cargo ships are having a problem, container shortages. So these are things we want to put on our radar and just be aware of. Can I just ask, does this type of stuff happen every year and we're just not so aware mm -hmm. of it? I mean, are there shortages that we're not aware of that, I mean, are, are typical? I think it has a lot more to do with the pandemic because because of what happened last year, yeah. things slowed down. And mm -hmm. now as we ramp back up, you need time to catch right. up. Okay. And what if you're watching your bank account, you know, and you want to yeah. swap foods? Yeah, that's that's really the key, right? Instead of hot dogs this year, maybe you're gonna have burgers or veggie burgers. Instead of the corn tortillas, go with flour tortillas. Get the aloe jelly instead of the boba. There are so many alternatives and different ways to get food and get the products that you need. Mm -hmm. So try not to focus on what you can't find. There will be many other options at the store as well. I mean, and there's plan ahead. If there may know. be a chicken wing shortage, but don't show up to my house with some cauliflower. <laughs> okay, no cauliflower. I knew you were gonna there's like that. There's a warning. Bone and warning. chicken thighs. Bone and chicken thighs. cauliflower is really good. good. Yeah, but it's not chicken it chicken. It's not, it's not chicken, <laughs> chicken wings. So That's what true. have you got to pull, Vic? I understand there's yes. some shortages there. Carrie Sanders was in the pool yesterday talking <laughs> about it. So it's those chlorine tablets. This is where we talk about how interconnected we all are. You remember the hurricane in Louisiana, Laura, right? So that caused the roof of one of these huge chlorine manufacturers to collapse. That really slowed production, and it's affecting everyone. Now, I've read some pool experts have said, look, you buy your one bucket of chlorine tablets for the summer, you'll be fine. Yeah. It's, the problem is when you buy three, I buy three, sure. then Dylan can't get it's one. It's like toilet mm -hmm. tissue all over. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the other thing to do to make your chlorine last long Longer, run the pool system. Also, get everybody to take a shower before they get in. That reduces mm -hmm. the amount of bacteria and dirt. Keep the pets out of the pool. Apparently, mm. one dog jumping in the pool is like 50, 30 people with oh, bacteria. Wow. Oh, wow. Literally? Yeah, that's Wait, what they I, say. Wait, my dog sleeps in my bed, so that doesn't say. <laughs> yeah, but your bed, unless you're sleeping in a water bed, it doesn't matter. <laughs> And there are journey. alternatives, too. Algae side and bleach. So talk to your local pool store mm. person. Just be prepared. P prices are going up 50 to 70% in some Jeez. places. Wow. But it's all local. With all the right. pandemic waning, Vic, a lot of folks uh, looking to hit the roads again. What, what can you tell us about the pandemic's effect on travel? So we will see issues with car rentals. We talked about this last week with people in Hawaii renting U-Hauls mm. instead of minivans because there weren't as many cars. So you want to join loyalty programs. Rent early when you can. Go directly to the source of the car. Check places like Costco um, and other membership clubs because that might be a spot. And nowadays there are apps that allow you to rent people's cars for mm. certain periods of time. So you mm. can look into that. Just want to be careful and read the fine. So I could rent Roker's, I could rent his if car? If he puts it up, People yeah. are doing it. Our, our stage manager, uh, uh, Yosef, did that. Yeah. yeah. You put your car up for rent? No, well, you, you rented and one. how did it go? Was car? it all right? Okay, good. 
Yeah, Turo, Turo. Oh, exactly. that's right. Yeah, and that's there's right. some really nice cars on there, too. You just have to, you know, be careful with the pricing. Due yeah. diligence. Mm. And really quickly, you know, we were talking a lot about how a lot of people are doing DIY projects at home. Remember we were talking about lumber? Was it yep. this yes. past that's summer? Right. How are things this summer? So they are talking about a spike in lumber prices Still. because everybody stayed home. Everybody thought, oh, I need to improve my kitchen, my office. Let me add a deck. Spending more time. Yeah. Exactly. So we are going to see, especially as late summer comes, prices of lumber going up. There are alternate materials you can use, but that's one that's really, it's tough to work around. You're just going to have to maybe budget or mm -hmm. consider putting that project off till next year if you yeah. want the prices to go back down. Gosh. All right. So yeah. basically what we're hearing, Vic, is there's pretty much a shortage of everything. Well, you just have to be smart about yeah. it. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Don't panic. Be smart and about it. And don't stock up because it makes it all worse. Exactly. Yeah. Right? For everyone else. Okay. Just get what you need. Great okay. tips as always. You, Vicky. Vicky win. Vicky, Vicky. No Vicky. summer bummers here. <laughs> are places we may not be able to visit for a while. Come with us as we take you there, into our incredible world. <laughs> South Korea assaults the senses with sights and sounds. It can be overwhelming. High rise, high tech with a flip side that has its roots in a more tranquil, ancient age. On our journey through this incredible country, we will encounter everything. From K-pop, to giant robots, and the amazing women freedivers of Murado Island. But for the first time visitor, this collision of yin and yang can be confusing. So I think I'm going to need some help. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Karen. Travel writer Hannah Yoon is giving me a tour of the nation's capital, Seoul. Yeah, some people say it looks like an alien spaceship. <laughs> and a crash course in Korean culture. I think Korean people are really passionate about <laughs> sports, about food, about family. Food. Now that's a good place to start. This is Gwangjang Market. They have some of the best street food in Korea here. Gwangjang Market is a mecca for foodies from around the world. This is tteokbokki, spicy rice cakes. It's like fluffy rice. Mm -hmm. It's going it's in a little bit of fish. fish. Yeah. Yeah. 65,000 people a day visit here. This is called omu. It's very fishy. Delicious. There are noodles, noodles and more noodles. These are kimchi dumplings. And a near obsession with a fermented spicy mm. vegetable dish, <laughs> kimchi. I love kimchi. The more Korean of a thing you eat, the more that Korean people love it. Good. <laughs> you wanna go for a coffee? Yeah, I'd love to. Koreans are crazy about coffee. Crazy is right. This is, well, the sheep cafe. Of course, there's a meerkat, raccoon, and kangaroo cafe too. And at cafes, you can sip your own selfie. Wow. Ooh. And here at the Princess Diary coffee shop, you get to dress up for your dream wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly ready. That goes for the groom, too. How do I look? I think the trousers may be a little big. I feel a bit like Charlie Chaplin. South Koreans have a thing for the weird and wacky, which combined with that love of food produces this. So this is a bokbang where people broadcast themselves eating because people don't want to feel lonely when they're okay. eating at home by themselves. This particular video has about six million hits. Six million people? Yeah. And this is Watching only... this guy eat? <laughs> yeah. Streets are bustling. This is a work hard, play hard culture. There's a lot of pressure to do well, to perform well. And pressure to look good. Image is everything here. No wonder some South Koreans are obsessed with cosmetic surgery. Let me show you something. On this floor, this floor, this floor, this floor, this floor, and on. They all offer plastic surgery. In fact, this whole district in Seoul is dedicated to making people fit the beauty stereotype. Dr. Kim. Uh, hi. Dr. Kim is one of Seoul's top cosmetic surgeons. In Korea, he says, parents often give their kids cosmetic surgery as a graduation present. Asian patients maybe want to have the concept of beauty in between the Asian and Caucasian. A kind of mixed look? Yes, a mixed fusion. look. Yeah. Many people prefer the mixed look. Please look at this scanner. 
Now, my turn. Dr. Kim takes a 3D scan of my face. So what can he do for me? Recommend you to make the eyebrow higher. Uh, your nose is quite nice, but tip is bulky. And you have some wrinkles around the eyes. I quite like my wrinkles around my eyes. Oh, you like it? Well, I mean, um, yeah. Uh, you like it now, but 20 years later, you will have more <laughs> wrinkles. For $10,000, he says, I can have this. So before and after. Before surgery and after. Have you had plastic surgery? No, of course I had some procedures to make my face a little look younger. It's quite common procedures in Korea. Because you look 25. Uh, actually, I'm 54, <laughs> too old. Dr. Kim, himself an amazing ad for his profession. Open Gangnam Style. Another obsession in this country, K-pop. We all know this guy, but there's more to K-pop than Psy. These days, K-pop stars like BTS are showing up in the US. We're back with BTS. Appearing on talk shows. Hi, nice to meet you. My name is RM. I'm the leader of this group. And this is Temin. He's so talented, they call him the idol's idol. K-pop expert Stacey Nam gets us an exclusive backstage pass. That's called a fan chat, right? right? So is they'll repeat the last word that he said. Like in one of the sentences, he says the word Adam Dawa, which means beautiful. Right. And then they say in response, beautiful. You're beautiful too. Yeah, you're beautiful. But how do you become a K-pop star like Temin? So you can audition, so that's one way. Right. One way is what they call street casting, which is when you're literally found on the street. I could be just heading home from school and, and then, boom, there I am, a K-pop star. Right, so maybe not you. <laughs> <laughs> Backstage, we get to chat with Temin. Thank you for your call. Coming? Coming. Yeah. You have it all, my friend. You, you have the looks, oh. you can dance, you can sing. Uh. Feels, <laughs> feels good, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Temin has been big here for a decade and recently toured America. And American fans scream. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> but you can see why. You can see why. Uh, American girls would scream. Mm. Where do you want to speak? Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> what does it take to make a K pop star like Temin? And more importantly, do I have it? K-pop choreographer Yoon Jung Bae knows exactly what it takes. At an audition, I can tell if someone's a good dancer in five or ten seconds, she says. Oh dear. <laughs> so, maybe I don't have what it takes? <laughs> but as the sun goes down, this way to the action. Yes, I think right. every way actually to the action. There's action in every direction. <laughs> Hannah and Stacey tell me that on a night out in Seoul, everyone can at least dream about being a K-pop star. Even if you're not much good. <laughs> I think we've heard enough of that. Coming up, South Korea, a country of contrasts, where ancient and high-tech collide. From the serene ritual of a 2,000-year-old tea ceremony, to a face-to-face -face encounter with a giant robot. Good morning, welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Congratulations to Lester Holt, the most trusted TV news anchor in America, on receiving the prestigious Edward R. Murrow Lifetime Achievement Award for a career dedicated to excellence in journalism. 
make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Our Across America journey Here in Louisville, Orlando, Kentucky. Kentucky. Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. It does seem as if this White House doesn't want to bring a lot of high-profile attention to the issue. What efforts might depoliticize vaccine hesitancy? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. South Korea has roots going back thousands of years, back to what many believe was a more enlightened time. Hi, Keith. Hi, Keir. Travel writer Keith Gioppo moved to Seoul from New York seven years ago. He takes me into this ancient palace in the heart of Seoul. In the 60s and 70s, the old generation, they knocked everything down to make way for modernization. But now people are starting to realize how precious it is. It's 5,000 years old. This is a part of our DNA. And today, younger Koreans are rediscovering their rich heritage, from the fashion for wearing traditional costumes to learning centuries-old calligraphy. And this ancient martial art called Takyo, also known as dancing with kicks. It perhaps inspired modern Taekwondo, South Korea's national sport. Then there is this, a 2,000 year old tea ceremony. Here we just kind of relax and enjoy every little pour. So when you, when you take the cup, mm -hmm. make, make sure you take it with two hands, you bring it up to your, to your nose, get a fragrance of it. And when you drink it, make sure you drink it all in three sips. It's all about harmony, isn't it? Yeah, balance and harmony. Yin and yang. And if the tea ceremony can be thought of as yin, then this is yang. One of the most advanced tech nations on the planet, South Korea is often home to the very latest gadgetry. <laughs> Virtual reality, face recognition technology. There I am. Smart homes. Now that's grocery shopping. And even smarter robots. Have a nice trip. At the airport, you might be greeted by one of these robot guides. There are robot fish. And these droids are skis. Sort of. Now all these guys are kind of cute. But then there's this. Meet Method 2, 13 feet tall, weighing in at one and a half tons, and yours for eight and a half million dollars. He's powerful. So powerful that for safety, scientists had to limit his strength. If the robot is much stronger than humans, people feel threatened. It's the creation of Yang Jinho, who dreamt about building robots as a kid. And today, a hundred million dollars later, that dream came true. We wanted to make a tool that helps humans. To go into hazardous environments like nuclear disaster zones, this metal giant Wish me luck. <laughs> it's also the world's first manned bipedal robot. That means okay. you can drive it. <laughs> Ben's looking a bit nervous. <laughs> a sense of power is awesome. <laughs> right now, there are limitations with robot technology. Method 2 is still taking baby steps, tethered for safety. A future dominated by robots may be a long way off, but one day we'll be meeting a lot more of these marvelous metal machines. Up next, a 
I travel to the southernmost tip of the country and get a lesson hunting for seafood with the Henyo, the incredible women freedivers of South Korea. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. I joined Ellen on her set, what's been a difficult year for her personally and for her show. Very few people go through such huge public humiliation. How can I be an example of strength and perseverance if I give up and run away? I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. <laughs> for traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Killer Row, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Ready, actors. An indie horror film, a talented young actress, and a deadly shot. Dateline's newest podcast, Killer Role. Action! Subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Now we are traveling to the southernmost tip of South Korea, to the remote and tiny island of Murada. Because of its ragged coastline, surrounded by treacherous seas, it was once known as the Forbidden Island. Today, it is home to a hundred people. <laughs> Among them, this extraordinary group of women. Hey, hey. They call themselves the Henyu. And they follow a tradition that goes back hundreds of years. Henyu. At 41, Kim Che Young is the youngest Henyu on the island. All year round, she, her mother, and aunt dive together in these treacherous waters. The Henyo, or women of the sea, are modern day mermaids. Without air tanks, holding their breath for up to two minutes at a time, these women collect seaweed, shellfish, and octopus from the seabed. How dangerous is it? If you're thinking other things, it's really dangerous. Last year, one woman was swept away. Is there a risk from sharks? Yes. A lot. A lot of sharks. Yes. With a handful of seaweed, Kim demonstrates how to keep the mask from fogging and the whistling technique that helps the henyo control their breathing. Few get the chance to dive with the henyo. To start with, I wasn't very good. With a little help from my friends, I began to get the hang of it. I just got one. Oh. <laughs> just what I was thinking, he's got more. <laughs> keep working, she said. Working. Stop <laughs> talking, keep good. This is a tough living. The women have a saying. One breath, one shellfish. I want people to know about Henyo. Photographer Wai Zin, who introduced us to the island, first encountered the Henyo a few years back. When I met them, they are look really strong and really look really happy. But back then, she says, these amazing women had no idea what people thought about them. 
Mama Henya told me she didn't know how how much she be proud. She, she didn't, didn't know, know she could be proud of herself. Yes. Until you came along. Yes. <laughs> Wisein has been documenting the Henyo and their proud tradition in a book of extraordinary photographs. She's 94. 94. This is Kim's grandmother. After 80 years, she still dives almost every day. And as night falls, it's time to cook up the catch. Is this the octopus that you caught today? We saw you grabbing it out of the rock. If you do all the work All day. What do the men do? Nothing. They do nothing. They the just waiting, nothing. waiting the lunch. Waiting for their lunch. <laughs> the words of the song are: Why was I born? The life of a henyo is so hard, and the water is so cold. To the henyo. Henyo. But at dawn, another day brings another dive. Aspirin to thin the blood, chewing gum in the ears to protect against the pressure. Secrets that may one day be forgotten. Their daughters lured to more modern careers. Only four and a half thousand henry are left. The whole of Korea. How long do you hope this tradition continues for? Just keep going, she says. Just keep going. There they go. There is a lesson here. Even when we are at our most advanced, there is value in the past. South Korea is a fascinating mix of both. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Make the most of your day with... Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. <laughs> in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right, I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines, so crucial for reopening America. A big day around here, a very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them, doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! These are places we may not be able to visit for a while. Come with us as we take you there, into our incredible world. You'd be forgiven for wondering why anyone, after the horrors of the recent past, would journey through a vast, desolate forest to a kind of Armageddon. Perhaps it's to explore that as bad as things have been in this pandemic, they could be worse. Like here in Ukraine, at the epicenter of the world's worst nuclear accident, the deadly radioactive hot zone of Chernobyl. So my Geiger counter has started making a noise. Mm, quite legitimately. <laughs> That number's going up and up. Uh, yeah, it should, it should. We can't be here for long. We can't live here, I would say, but we can visit this area. My guide, Sergei Merny and I, make our way through the dense undergrowth. Then we find ourselves in Main Street of a once thriving village. It's like the clocks just stopped. 
it used to be the biggest village of the zoo. And we are in the middle of this village. This was the doctor's office. These are people's medical records, just left on the floor. And among the remnants of life that was once here, newspapers dating back to the Soviet era. Oh, it's Pravda. This is about the Soviet space program. Yeah. And this is the village shop. It says food stuff. <laughs> no marketing was needed back then. <laughs> it's the local store. Yeah, local village store. How many people lived here? Uh, 3,000 people. It was the biggest village of the zoo. 3,000 people lived here. And now? Well, nobody. There's nobody. Sergei was here in the spring of 1986 when the deadly radioactive fallout fell from the sky. A botched experiment with the cooling cycle at the power station turned into a nuclear disaster. At its peak, the reactor was burning at 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, unleashing 400 times the radioactivity of the Hiroshima nuclear bomb, sending a radioactive cloud across 60,000 square miles. More than 300,000 people were evacuated. Like the children who used to attend this school, Everyday things, dolls, shoes, a bike, left behind in a hurry. Some are learning music. Strange to think that the little ones who were once here will now be middle-aged. It is eerily quiet. Uh, give me your Geiger counter. But the radiation is everywhere. Here, here you see the edge of the roof where the rainfall drops down. And now if you measure uh, the trace, uh, you will see that it is much higher than it's the... It's going up, the numbers are going up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, during my, my work in the Chernobyl zone and the radiation levels uh, in the center, in, uh, in the most contaminated areas, were exactly 1,000 times higher. Than this? Than this, yeah. Back in 1986, Sergei was one of the many military men sent here when the reactor blew up. He had been trained for nuclear war. His job at Chernobyl was to help clean up the radioactive waste, along with over half a million other men. So this is where it happened? Exactly, exactly. And you can see the turbine hall of the nuclear power plant. This is the, the roof of the third unit. Some of his colleagues doing the most dangerous job of all clearing the fallout from the roof of the reactor. All those guys, they were allowed to work for a very, very short period of time. Look how, how quickly they run, because they have very limited time. They were incredibly brave. And all of us were, were crazy back, back then. When uh, each day uh, you go into this site, and this site there were tens of thousands of people all, all around. You feel yourself just a small, uh, you know, live particle of this huge mess. And so it suppresses, you know, the feeling of, of danger. Just a mile from the reactor through the forest is Pripyat once a gleaming new company town, full of good jobs, new schools, modern apartments. It is now a silent city. So that's the hotel. That's the cinema. The buildings are here, but the people, 50,000 of them, have gone. Long ago. Their apartments abandoned, their hometown forgotten and radioactive. And for centuries, the law says, no humans can live here. This Ferris wheel had just been built, never used. People were told they'd be evacuated for three days. That was more than 30 years ago. And when humans leave, nature reclaims its territory. Trees grow up through the ruins. Plants and flowers bloom everywhere. And even in the reactor's cooling pools, 
catfish grow to enormous size. Wildlife is thriving here in Chernobyl. This is the place where nature speaks uh, with uh, human beings on, on equal terms and it uh, teaches humans uh, modesty, I would say. Modesty? Exactly. Why? We should be wiser after this. As we leave, we are checked for radiation. Clear. And we should all remember, not just that our lives can be irrevocably, catastrophically turned upside down, but that if we truly learn from the past, we can make a better future and a better world. These are places we may not be able to visit for a while. Come with us as we take you there into our incredible world. Well, hello, Loyal Today All Day viewers. We see you. We thank you for spending your Tuesday with us. So, it, Tuesday is not a thing. It's catching No, on. it's not. Okay, welcome to Today in 30. It's all you love about the show in 30 minutes. So, first up, 